Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now. Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dome Show. Ah, uh, yes. We are live on the Dr. Green Thumb Show, YouTube, Twitch, Discord, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. What it do? To my right, Mr. Goodlight, DJ C Minus in the building. What up? Happy Monday. Up in the treehouse, the treehouse crew, Bolton, Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, yo, what up, B? We're doing good. We got some very special guests up in here. We got my man, Young Hump, in the what building. Up, okay. We got my man Money B up in here. What it do? Yes. It's good to be back with family, man. Good, be, good to be back with family. Oh, man, it's it's been some years since you've been here, but I'm glad yep. you're back. Absolutely. Um, we go so far back. It was we were talking about it off the air. Um, and, and uh, you know, we were talking about how we used Sen and I. And sometimes mugs, we'd come to your shows right. early on and catch the experience. Like we'd be hanging out with them while they were setting up, and then they'd go on and proceed to kill. Oh man, the crowd later on in the night. And yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what. You know, I've said it um, sometimes to people. You know, when they ask me, you know, what's the best show you ever saw in hip hop? Mm. 
Digital Underground is one of the best shows I ever saw in hip hop. Like still to this day, like the the creativity that y'all placed on it. I told you guys off the air, like you you guys put a lot of thought into it. Mm-hmm. Whereas guys were just going up, doing their songs, and boom, off they yeah. go, right? Oh, and that was cool. But y'all gave a visual that was incredible. Right. It was a thought process for sure. Yeah. We definitely put a lot of thought into it. And we, and we, we st- to this day, we try to carry on that same tradition. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. You guys you guys were doing, you guys were like art students to, to start off with, right? Yeah. Um, Shock, Shock G was an amazing artist, right? And... You know, I actually did go to an art school, you know, coming up. So I used to mess around with tagging and yeah. low graffiti, whatever you want to call it. So art was definitely in us, you know what I mean? Yeah. But Shock used to, all of those, who's that rapper, the big signs. Yeah, who's that rapper. All the graphics, even all of the um, single covers, Shock drew all of those. Yeah, those were those were dope. So for anybody, you know, that, that never seen what Who's That Rapper is, right? It's a crowd participation piece that, you know, my peoples used to do or still do, right? You guys still do it or? Well, we we have it, oh. right? It's it's in the back of my it's mind there. to one day bring it back, so, you know? So let me describe it, right? It's a crowd participation bit. Have you seen it? No. Have you seen it? Okay, oh, so let's it. just say... Um, they're, they're asking the crowd to guess. And it's obvious when it comes out, but the way it's presented is dope. So a Fuse would cut in, um, let's just say... We did Cypress Hill. Yeah, you guys did Cypress Hill. You did Easy e You guys did Hammer. EPMD, Hammer. Oh, and yeah. they would do little little small vignettes of the song with the mask, and people would like reply back who yeah. those rappers were. It was fucking genius. Dope. Right. I still I still haven't seen anything as creative as that. You know how that you know how we came with that idea? It was so organic. One day, um <clears throat> now obviously I'm not smoking now, but I used to smoke. I remember <laughs> back then. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I used to bring Sin Dog weed yeah. from the bay when that's, I when we used to come down. That's right. Nice. Yeah. Oh we. Yeah. I was the first mule. <laughs> <laughs> the first mule. I was the first mule. That's an album cover. <laughs> right. Hey, that's an album right there. Um <laughs> But yeah, man. So one day we were we were rehearsing, um, and we were in the studio just smoking and kicking it high as fuck, and we were fucking around. And I took you know, remember MC Hammer had the the his first album cover. It was just his face. Yeah, with the shades on. Face right? with the shades on. Yeah. And I put the album cover up to my face, and I started doing the dance and acting crazy, and everybody was cracking up. And we was like, you know what? We should put that in the show. And Genius. That's just how it started. Just organic. Organic like, like that. that yep. Those are some of the best moments, man. Yeah. And, and you know, some be- some of the best moments are made by mistake too. Like yeah. when you figure something out on stage that eventually becomes a thing. Right. Where it was just a, a, a spontaneous, like right there in a the bit, and you didn't know if it was going to work or not. But if it did, boom. Then it has to stay. Then it has to stay. Yeah, like we got to do that. Bottle that. And then there's other shit that doesn't necessarily work. And you're like, damn, I wish I could get that minute and a half back. Wow. Or, or you just want to crawl. <laughs> just want to, like, yeah. Into the dirty. Like, well, we've had those. Yeah, we've had those, too. We've had those. I think, you know, I think every every group in life has had one of those moments. Both. Mm. You know, where you, you stumbled on something you didn't anticipate working. But I don't think you I don't think you come across the genius unless you think that crazy where you you're gonna have to fail at some you know what I mean? Yeah. You have yeah. to throw out the ideas to see which ones stick. Yeah, you gotta know what you, yeah, you gotta take the chance. You have to, to take know. the chance, yeah. You know, you can't be afraid to fail because it's like, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> All right, let's move on. I'd like yeah. I'd like some of these young cats to take a chance on their verses. Bring it. Teach. For real. <laughs> you know for, real for real. Take Please chance. expand on that. T- take a chance on actually doing your verses. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Instead of like riding underneath. Oh, you mean like actually rhyme on yeah, like instead act- of karaoke in right. their shit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know like what? Like kind of guessing your songs. Uh, while, like do them. Or, yeah. Yeah, that, that's like a pet peeve. Yeah. Oh my God! You know how much that shit bothers me, bro. Right. And, 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 yeah, it's it's kind of crazy to to think that like you know you're trying to have a career in this, and part of that career is 
performing and winning people over with this music and performing it tight. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I manage a younger artist, Lil Mikey TMV, and I tell him like this. I'm like, look, bro, like people want to hear, you know, they want to hear you live, whether it's imperfect or perfect. If you're perfect, yeah. you're not. Yeah. They just want to know that it's you giving the performance. Yeah. Right. Because if, if not, I could just listen to your record at the house. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? And 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 hear it this way every time. I want to be the, I, I want to say I was at that show when he said this different. Yeah. Right? That was yeah. the time he did this or or something didn't work. Yeah. You know, like I've 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 done shows where I was too drunk to finish a verse and cats be like, "Oh, I remember I was at that show." Yeah. You didn't do it, but it was dope how you just yeah. fell on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that part. I'll word. forget the one word. Like when I'm smoking, I don't forget anything. But if I if I had enough, yeah, to drink, right, which I don't do, but when I've done it, it's yeah. always that first goddamn word. And you know, it's something you've done hundreds of times. Word. And you forget the one thing. Oh my. Yeah, God. it happens to everybody. Yeah. The the best one forever forever to me was you know because the Loonies are part of the Digital Underground family. Right. So we did a show. You remember in in San Jose. And we called Num, Numsko on yeah. the stage to do five on it. And he couldn't figure the first line. So he just stood there for long. Hey, you know, that's a contagious thing, too. Yeah, and when you can't get it, yeah. then it gets in your head. And, and then the, you really can't get yeah. it. You might ask someone who also noted, knows it as well as you do. And you're like, hey, C, what's the first line? And C might be like, oh, shit, what is the first line? Yeah, that happens. Like it becomes Bro. contagious. This, oh, man. This, that, uh, that's yeah. happened to me when I get around several times. And one time I stopped, like I was on a showcase. It, it was actually at a at a sesh, at like a weed sesh. I was performing at it, and I just fucked it up. And I was like, wait, 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 I can't, because it was like a bunch of young cats who probably had never seen me rock before. Right. And I was like, no, 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 start that off. <laughs> I'm not going out like that. <laughs> no, no, we gotta try that one again. Yeah. yeah Have you ever started too. over and the same thing happened? I did. That happened to me. <laughs> I, I, that definitely has happened to me. Like. Twice, I think. One on real estate. We were doing real estate, uh, and I totally oh, botched it. And I said, "Hey, da, da, da. I tried to play it off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yo, this crowd ain't live enough. <laughs> you know, the old this crowd ain't live enough nice. joint, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had, I, you know, <laughs> we started uh, over, and I fucked up right in the same spot, man. Like that night, it was not meant for that song, man. I could not, I could not get past the one part. I don't know why, because we d did that song so many times that. I should have had it flawlessly. Yeah, and you do, but when, like you said, once you don't catch the first, when you don't have it, mm -hmm. then you you think too hard, think and then you really hard. can't get it. Yep. Yeah. It's like, damn it. That's the worst thing that could happen to a rapper, too. It is. Like that is oh, one man. of the worst things because you beat yourself up. It's lonely. That. Yeah. <laughs> you may get through the rest of the show, and it might be cool and shit, and you might have rebounded it you know, killed the rest, but you will <laughs> always remember that one. It's like if you had, if you were in the boxing ring and you had this championship fight going on, and let's just say you won that fight, but in the third round, he you put your ass down to the ground. Right, You're going right. to remember that always. Oh, like, forever. Damn, I had to... Uh, I had to face some adversity right there. And you, get <laughs> up. Absolutely. Get up. Get up, Rocco. Get up, you That's bum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Rocco. Come on, Rock. Because <laughs> Mickey loves you. Because <laughs> Mickey loves you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, man. That's that. That's one of the... It's it's. But these rappers, they don't have... Like, these younger rappers, they don't have this problem because they're rapping with the trash. Yeah. Oh, they, the decide, they decide, I don't even want to do the verse. I'm just going to dance around. Right. I'm a, well, yeah, well, downstairs. you know, you see cats and they're doing the song, then they stop and let the music play while they roll a blunt or something. Yeah, no, nah, I can't That's do that. Wow. Oh, man, like, like, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> or they get to doing ad-libs for their ad-libs. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. you're doing ad-libs for ad-libs. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Loud, and then it's over overpowering the main verse, and you're like, bruh, rah, like, I rah. like your voice, bruh. Yeah. I like your voice. Can I hear your voice, not your hype ad-lib? Ad it's crazy, man. Gotta it's add. true, though. You, yeah. hey, that's facts. Like, yeah. you know, we want to hear the verse. Yeah. Right. Like, oh I want to hear, like, the track going and you doing ad-libs to your track. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, like, totally ass backwards. It's idiotic. It's idiotic, man. Indeed. Uh, 
but I, I, I would imagine at some point people will get tired of this type of shit and it'll go, you know, the quality will come back. It always does. It just t- takes a matter of time for the bullshit to be yeah. out long it's, enough for people to get tired of it's it. It's secular. Right. Yeah. <laughs> secular, indeed. <laughs> yes. It comes around. It Truth does. goes around. Woo! I think artists got to listen more to themselves and other artists and not listen to like maybe people that ain't artists telling them, but see, if you play the track, then you don't have to worry about this and that and da 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 da. And they probably listening to the wrong people. True that. Meanwhile, legendary MCs is like, bruh, fuck that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they ain't listening to the right people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure. That's, that's true. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, Instead of doing the skill set and actually being an artist, artist, there's more. It's more about popularity. Yeah, like they don't really. The music is secondary to their popularity. Yeah, it's not about that. It's just about, like you said, it's the it's the the fashion statement. Or How lit my look was. Yeah, yeah, it's my wave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck my wave. I'm on this pill and I'm just riding it. Yeah, and that's Fuck. it. As opposed to let me do the best I can right here, so that I have I leave the best impression possible as an artist to like some of them just don't care like a lot of artists before this generation they all gave a shit about being an artist it was their only thing like the yeah. passion right and now it's like these right. these cats treat it like it's some secondary shit right yeah it's just that's just part that's just a piece of the brand yeah the brand is the thing yeah and then the oh, rap yeah. shit is just oh yeah, yeah. The, br- the brand is my controversy and the rap shit is yeah. just the, you know the appetizer to it it's the thing that gets you over here and you know and f- I don't want it to sound like we're just like we're bashing the new people because it's I not think, all of them. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not all of them. And then, I, but I also want to be quick to share that we had whack MCs back in True the time. True that, right? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So that, we're absolutely. definitely not saying everything that we did back then was perfect because it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It was whack rappers. There's there's always been whack rappers. Absolutely. You know, because like it's, yeah, yeah, it's from day on. one. And motherfuckers just in it for the money and not in yeah. it for the skills, right? But but but. Not as much because you had to invest in it a little bit more yeah. mm-hmm. back then. You had to get out, do shows, yeah. fucking get your money, go into a studio yeah. instead of making beats on your watch. Oh, yeah. And fucking yeah. uploading I, it up to YouTube like, and it doesn't cost you anything. I remember telling people, like, you know, when you had a song, you had to invest in, you know, the studio. Right. Then to get it pressed. Yep. On, you know, yep. <laughs> on vinyl or CD, you know, like. Liars and shit. Liars. Pass them out. Stickers. You had to go out to pass them out. And then go pass them to, you know, like, figure out which DJ could, you know, oh, I need to get this to the DJ that's going to let this be heard by the most people. All right, Buy that go. motherfucker drink. Yeah. Everything. Hey, man, you, wrote, you know, here's, I brought a blunt for you, you know, like, yep. you know, it was like, like, it was that rather than now, it's just like, oh, I can make something at home and then boop, upload. And it's the world is and if my the oyster. Right, if the right people share it, it's on and pop. Yeah. yeah. And that's cool. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, I wish we had that yeah, available to us. That's, that's an <laughs> way back, like oh, when man. we were first starting. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. They, yeah. they have the luxury of it now. Mm-hmm. Um, but. They just, you know, like with with all the technology they got and and all the springboards that are available to them without having to, you know, sell their their ideas to a major label. I mean, at least do the art better. Yeah. You have more opportunities than any artist ever has in the fucking lifetime of Man. being one. Mm. Just be better about it. Come yeah. on. That's all I'm saying. You're so right because it's like the, the the technology and all the comforts, it breeds laziness. You know, what unfortunately, I mean? it breeds laziness. Yeah, and it's like you think people will say, "Well, shit, if all I got to really worry about is getting busy, I'm gonna be that motherfucker and get busy." Yeah, but they not. They thinking about, okay, I'm gonna go do this other shit, and then I focus on the main thing, which is being that motherfucker. So getting on stage, it's like, come on, man! Like at yeah. least on stage, at least have your voice. Give us what we coming for, not a backup track. Like something. Come on, yeah. Man. You know come when I it. when I think about <laughs> whack rappers from back in the day. You guys remember when when Roxanne Roxanne came out? Yeah. And then it was everybody had a Roxanne record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Roxanne's grandmother, Roxanne's yep. uncle, Roxanne's, you know, godparents, yep. babysitter. Adopted aunt. <laughs> yeah. Cousin everybody Dallas had Street. a Roxanne. It was like, oh, this shit is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank God that's not happening. Yeah. But I mean, 
some of the shit you see is it's it's like crazy. Like especially with some of the offbeat rapping, like on purpose. Yeah. Shit. yeah. Or oh, that maybe it's not on purpose. Maybe this is just their skill set. I don't know Thank what you. it is, but that shit is fucked up. Thank you for speaking on it. I was telling somebody the other day, don't fucking tell me that that's that's a style. That's a motherfucker in the early stages still learning how to get on beat. Right. 100. A lot of that shit is not a style. Now some people Fuck with it a little bit. It's a style, but most of them are just people ain't really there yet. Yeah, you can yep. tell. You yeah, can really yeah. tell. Yeah, man. Yeah, because I mean, back in the day, you'd get clowned. Oh man, for that. Hell yeah, yeah. you wouldn't you survive the, the. You could cypher. be on the front of the flow, right on the money of it, or in back of it, whichever. But you had long the land. as it, it all had to be locked. You had the land. You had the land. You land it. And these land. and some of these cats ain't landed, not landing bro. at all. When they're too ahead of the beat and there's no rhythm to what they're doing. Yeah, they're not rhyming to it. Yeah, yeah. They're, not they're rhyming. too ahead of the beat. That's most of them. Most of them. Some time, of them you know? are a little bit behind it, but most of them are ahead of it. Yeah. It's and it's like, like a thing. It's like if I'm DJing two records and I'm mixing, a, you know, like you do your blends in the mix show, you know, you're doing acapella over another beat. It's like you almost want to like slow, just tap it. I'm trying to the, rush my first. Uh, yeah, 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 you're I'm trying to get trying, it in. I'm just trying to like tap it so I can get it on to that groove it needs to be in to match, you know, with what's going These, on. I'm just wondering what's going on with the engineers. Like they don't even think to like maybe chop the verse out of time and land it on the beat, like even close, but not. Hey, now, you know what it is? The, the rappers, gangster homeboys like, yeah, that's what yeah, it is. That's it. Like, hey, yeah. there it is. That shit is hard. All right, and I leave that one. shit just like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nah, this should be like unripe fruit. Like when yeah. you get a, some unripe fruit, that's what it sounds like. That's like a, it ain't ready yet. That's a great analogy. It ain't. Thank you, King. Appreciate it. That's that. a great analogy. Unripe, unripe fruit. Yeah. Unripe fruit. Yeah. Exactly unripe what the fuck fruit. Not ready. Not ready. Yet. Not ready for <laughs> That banana is way too green. Yeah. <laughs> That's not ready for consumption, baby. Yeah. Right. Get that shit, man. But along the way, their homies have hyped them up to be like, oh, that man, put it out. Oh, man, you're going to change. You know? But it's not it. Like, and, that's a, and there's people that have become fans of that. Yeah, because they think it's a style, and it's yeah, not yeah. a style. It's a motherfucker Facts. that can't rap yet. Facts. People say, oh, you unripe did- fruit. Facts. They're different. If we want, They're if we, this. If we want to stay politically correct, unripe. Unripe fruit. Hey, you know what it is? So many people just want to hear something different. I mean, in general, the history of music is a lot of times people just like something because it's different. So people just like, that's different. And they just get intrigued by it. Yes. And then a lot of times, like the other factors, like if they look at the rapper and he looked like, like if it's a dude looking at a rapper and he looked like somebody he could relate to, or if the chick's looking at the rapper and they, they like him and shit on some, they got a crush on him or whatever, they lock in on that and the brand and all the movement around the yeah. dude. And we sitting back as rap, like aficionados, like, but he ain't busting though. He ain't busting. Like, yeah. what yeah. the fuck is going on? This is rap music. This isn't brand music. Yeah. But maybe it is now. <laughs> brand well, music. Maybe, like well, they're, they're yeah. trying to flip it into that. It's yeah. on its way. I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, it's here. <laughs> it's I don't know here. if it's on its way. This shit is here. Yeah. There's still hip-hop music and still rap music, but there is also now brand music. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, come on, man. Yeah. It's Just, I, I don't care. Just at least put some more effort into the 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 presentation of it. Yeah, care about it. Care yeah, about it. Exactly. Take that's, it seriously. That's what yeah. you want. Take I mean, a lot of motherfuckers, you know, like sacrificed to be an artist to be able to like get looks that they get, and, and some motherfuckers are just like, nah, whatever, it's cool. Yeah, they fall in it because homie from the set said it was cool. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Like you ever, if I don't know, you guys ever go on Reddit? Yeah. Like I have, I've seen it. If you ever go to a spot called Crappy Music, go to a subpage oh, called man. Crappy Music, and I Neither. promise you, it is the it, crappiest, dude. But it's amazing how some of these people are just like just rapping, and they don't, they shouldn't. It, no one's telling them. Their well, friends are telling them, "Oh, keep going." I know you. I know you'll relate to this. It's. It reminds me of back in the day when you used to be on tour, right? And you go to all these cities yeah. and everybody would give you a demo. Oh man, yeah. And then you listen to some of these demos and be like, this is never going <laughs> to. Yeah. And now that shit is out now. Now that's, right. yeah. that's, yeah. that's now it's the shit. Now it's the shit. What, yeah. The demos that we were like, put in the, in the stack, because I would never just throw somebody's shit away. Yeah. I just, you know, respectfully put, would put it. Put it away and then maybe you heard it <laughs> some at some point. No, I never heard it again. Oh. Just put it, put it away, away. I'll tell you, Muggs would listen to him just for the sake of chucking them, like, oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't do that. But, no, but, he loved doing that shit. Oh man, you know whose demo I heard? Um, we were on tour one time, and Safir was on the road with us, right? Oh, Safir, we're in like North no Carolina at, at some college, right? He comes on the bus with this dude. He's like, bro, you got to check this out. 
plays the demo, and the shit was, it was, it was nice, right? And I was like, nah. and that's rare. I was like, I was like, you know what? I said that sound cool. I was like, yep, y'all should keep fucking with it. You know who it was? It was fucking Lords of the Underground. Oh wow! That was, wow. That was wow. salute to Lords of the Underground. It was in, it was in college in North Carolina, and Sophia bought bought the demo on the bus, and we played it. And it was like, damn, oh, nice. Yeah, they were dope. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it was nothing we could do. Yeah, but it's just the but, fact that you know sometimes some you, hot shit comes through. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah, man, and you know. It, it's crazy how many things that you don't even know might have slid through because it's 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 hard to keep track of all those goddamn demos we got back. I remember that? Now I they had could to be reminded. Now wow. they could just email them to you. Yeah, you know I mean they don't gotta hand them to you. Oh, hey, yeah. what's your email? Let me send you this this demo, whatever. And that way yeah. you got to have that shit in your hand. But that was the surefire way you thought of, that a, that a person would listen to you. And that that wasn't always the case. They, even if you handed it to them, did guarantee they were going to listen to it. It didn't. But then yeah. the other thing that also happened is, say someone gives you a demo, yep. and maybe you did or you didn't listen to it, but then years later you do a song, and they're like, oh, man, that was my idea for my demo I gave you. And you're like, uh, you bit my shit. You prove took, it. You took my thing. Uh, I gave you the demo. I gave you the demo. Yeah. You, watch. Listen to it again. Oh, man. You said MCs. Yeah. The subcon- you said MCs. The subconscious is a motherfucker. I was there, remember? <laughs> man. Remember? The motherfucker. I've you were influenced by the song I sent you, man. Yep. He t- Definitely. Oh. You bit my shit. Uh. You know, it's, 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 it's always been kind of wild. Now it's a little bit more wild, but. Yeah, hey, it's but just, you know what? I love it. Yeah, me too. Hey, We're still here. I was, yeah, I'm still here. I, I just like talking about it. I ain't got over oh, yeah. yet. G- got over it yet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm, st- I'm still I'm, right I'm here. Still rocking. Yeah, Hell talk yeah. about it. Hell Wait. yeah. And you know, there's still is a bunch of dopes. And like, you know, a lot of, because I noticed a lot of people have tried to, to bait me into the question, you know, what do you think of today's hip hop? And like, oh, because I'm an old, you know, I'm an older head. They're going to be like, oh, he's going to shit on it. And I'm always like, hey, see. What do you think of today's hip hop? Oh man, let me tell you about it. Real <laughs> yeah, quick. let's hear. No, actually, I love you know, I love some of the stuff that's coming out today. I actually look for newer stuff to be like, like oh, okay, I like that. You know, what yeah. I mean? like you know, some supposed- of it's dope. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to hear new things. Yeah, I, I, I fuck with it. It's not, it's not all whack. It's like you said, man. You know, even in the earliest of times of hip hop, there was dope shit and there was whack yeah, shit. And listen to what you like. Yeah. Or what, what's dope? You know, I'm I'm, ex- I'm excited to hear it until I'm not excited. Yes. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like, <laughs> yes. And you know, I think it's like, you really just got to look a little harder. Like yep. another way to look at it would be like a party. Let's say you went to a club. Let's say you got to, got to a club at like 1030 and there's like 200 people there. And by 130, there's a thousand people. Right. Let's let's say in let's say the late 80s or whatever, early 90s, let's say late 80s. Let's say I'm just numbering it gonna make sense. But let's say there was like. With, OK, we go back to the party. What I'm saying with the party is let's say at when, when, when it was 200 people, let's say at a 200 people, like 150 of them are cool. But by the time it's a thousand people, maybe like 400 of them are cool. So you got right. majority of people that ain't so cool. That's what the rap shit is like. Yeah. Back in the day, the majority of motherfuckers were cool, but now you got so many motherfuckers came yep. to the party. It's oh, yeah. dominated by people that ain't dope. Yeah, yep. you know what I mean. That's true. Yeah, I had to. I had to map that shit out with the numbers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's go back to the party. Yeah. You did that properly. Come on, you did that properly. He landed. I, I have he landed. landed. He landed. He landed. He landed. He landed. You know I thought it was is? like you know when you we was talking about when you forget what you're about to say. Oh, I'm gonna tell you what, oh, yeah. No, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I actually have it perfected, <laughs> but it's a longer version, and I'm trying to you know expedite things for the show. So I right. try to speed right. it up. Right. I feel you. Know, no, okay. Appreciate it. I feel you. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I mean, that's it's 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 the truth, and that's more than anything as it relates to being an artist, being a rapper these yes. days you know there's a lot of cool motherfuckers out there but there it's not necessarily 1000 no i mean yeah right. I mean, and even back in the day if you had to pay for studio time motherfuckers wasn't gonna pay for studio time unless you was really something worth paying unless you for. was yeah. nice unless you, you yeah, was yeah worth paying for yeah, was gonna yeah. Do it. oh yeah what, that's what i mean like it's it's oversaturated because it doesn't cost it doesn't cost you as much you know to try it yeah because so, if you can do it in your bedroom and if it fails, so what? You just get up and go. Yeah. But if you save your money to get studio time and you press up 
flyers and demo and all this shit. Yeah. Bro, you, yeah. Better, you better know something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you used to get <laughs> someone would be very honest with you at that point and be like, you need work. Yep. Before, yeah. you know, we could put you on or, you know, give you a deal. This, you know, you're still green in yeah. this shit. But because the game has has grown in the independent aspect of it that like I don't need a label to put out what I want even if it's garbage yeah or if it's in the middle maybe it's a diamond in the rough it's not necessary it's it's not great but it's not bad right? right either way I don't have to wait on a label I could just put it out and you know for <laughs> unfortunately that is one of the parts of the game that like we cannot control. So like yeah. if someone puts out a mediocre ass record where right. a motherfucker's barely rapping on it or barely, you know, barely rapping on beat or not at all, there's nothing we could really do about that. A label but you, in good conscience wouldn't put that out because they know, okay, this shit is oh, yeah. but you amateur know, hour right here. But I, now it's freely out there. I kind of like that aspect of it when I when you say because remember when we talked about everything is secular, right? It always comes right. back around. So right. remember when hip-hop started, it was only independent labels. Right. Yep. right. And it's kind of gotten back to that, right? You have to be, you ha right now you have to put yourself out because yeah. labels- They put they, shit they, out. They, yeah. You gotta have a thousand, you gotta have a, a hundred thousand followers, already have sold 10,000, you know, yeah. you have to do the yeah. work before they even fuck with you. Yeah. So you, have to point, do, you have to do your own artist development before they'll fuck with you. Yes. Oh yeah. And, and, my point of that is, if I do all of that shit and get to this point for you to fuck, why do I even have to fuck with you? Because I already did it. Yeah. And But it's people's, hung, you know, people want to be more famous than they want to be successful in this business. Right. So they'd rather give it all away to be on a bigger platform. Yes. Yeah. And to be like, I'm on Universal and, I'm, and now everybody sees me as opposed to, bro, I just fucking sold, you know, 25,000 units or whatever you want to call it. And I can continue to do this and actually make a living. Yeah. As opposed to just give it all away just to be just on to the be, same label just as the baby. Yo, there's yeah. some artists that had a real nice momentum and a streak going independent. And then they signed with certain labels for that look. And they got the pictures and everything look good. And then that should be stagnant for a while. And you was like, man, they was hitting you like this, boom. And it was moving. And then they signed with a label and it was like, Thank you, thank you, Master Sound Man. Crickets, that's what I'm that's talking right. about. Be Real TV got the shit on point. <laughs> yeah, um, I love it. Yeah, and, man. But that's real shit. You know, they see they 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 get on the bigger the so called bigger platform, Correct. and they see less money. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? They got they got all the light, but less money. That's why if you're gonna do that, you better have a short term contract. Yep. That way you could like you could pretty much take advantage of the resources that you got while you're on this major label, build up your shit so that when you make that exit, you could still make a living and now you're you're more established. Take and, it with you. Yeah, take it with you. Right, get your, you know, create your own database. That's, <laughs> Collect it. that's right. everything. Because no, really, everything is all about data anyway. Collect the data. As long as I have my data, I can contact and get it to the people who I want to be informed about what I'm doing. So, and that's all that these labels are doing now. They're just collecting data, algorithms, information. Yeah. And yeah. that's how they're getting it out. Well, you can collect that for yourself or tap into that bigger platform's database. If they're using you, use them. Like you said, have a plan, have right. an exit strategy, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's everything. Life, stocks. But I'll say this some of these young cats, man, they their business sense is pretty goddamn good. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe their music ain't as great as their business acumen, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, they, they got game shit, done changed. But they got some game. <laughs> yeah, game they got changed. Game, yeah. I'll say real, that. Real. No hate. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I appreciate when someone can get out of the situation they were and like push to to a different place. Yeah, and, and get it, get it, and get it. Instead yeah, so of instead of getting got. Yeah. yeah, so when you listen, and it's like if you listen in because you want to be motivated by a guy who's got his business and hustled and is cool, but if you listen in because you want to hear like a song that impacts you in a deeper way than just motivational, they might not be the artist. You got to go back to some of the old right. classic shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to go to the classics for the, yeah. for the you know. But, you here, that, but that's why it's a struggle for all of us, right? Because we do want these 
people to get, you know, get their money and get into these situations or better their situations. Yeah. But like at the cost of the of the art of the, the art, culture, that is the problem. It, it, it you don't want to hate it, but your real self is telling you you can't digest that. Right. Right. But OK, get your money. bro. It's so, junk food. Yeah. 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 I don't eat it, but fuck it. Yeah, but if yeah. you look at it in it, it, it dietary aspects, that's junk food. It is, yeah. and I don't, you know, I don't. If 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 you can sell that hamburger or whatever that is, that bacon that you're doing, sell it. <laughs> I just can't eat it. I can't have it. Yeah, right. there's options yeah. though. You know what I mean? That's yeah. a good thing. But that's it's it's the same shit. You know, there's music that has the, as they say, right? That there's music that that feeds the soul. Mm-hmm. A lot of it that we hear these days ain't it, but right. there are some. And, uh, you know, salute to those that are still making it because it's out there. It's just you had to right. fucking go through great lengths to find it. It's like crate digging, but in the digital world. Right. But um, did y'all see uh, that, that J. Cole apologized to Kendrick yeah. for the man? That was that was. That was G shit. I gotta say, I I, I appreciated that. I wasn't mad at him. I wasn't, wasn't mad, mad at him. That was like on some mad oh, shit. Oh, about to say something. What you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say because I was like, homie, like because I, I when I heard the diss, I was like, oh, dude, this is lame. Even for someone like him, like I don't dis, I don't dislike J Cole. I just, you know, he's got bars. I like J Cole. I you do know? too. Um, but when I heard that he entered into the fray of it, you know what I mean? I was just like. Man, but I do respect him hella for being like, you know what? That was lame. I did it. I'm out of it. I'm not putting my my two cents of it anymore. And like, you know, that was some real G shit. But I I, I could appreciate the way he explained it too. Yes. Like, you know, him being a friend and a fan and how, you know, it letting it get the sort of best of him. Yeah, yeah ego is gonna make you respond quickly. But yeah, it's like look, man. but how it felt bad on his soul right? after yeah. you know what I mean. Hey, I'm gonna tell y'all like this. I, I know you got something to say. Straight you know? up and down, I feel like that was a move. Like if he'd have called up Robert Greene, bro, bro, that wrote the Forty Eight Laws of Power and all that. Uh-huh. That's like the perfect strategical move. Cause bust it. Yeah, he gets the diss off right. Mm-hmm. People are saying what you say, like saying it's mid. So then. He's like, damn, they ain't even feeling that like that. Now, I'm not saying this is his thought process. I'm right. just hypothesizing, yeah. right? And he just be like, he apologized. So then he demonstrates, you know, I'm a mature, I'm a high moral cat, you know, this is what it is. He demonstrates himself as a good brother and he gets people to say, yo, that's, you know, we got to respect the maturity in hip hop. That's what's, what's up. Right. Simultaneously, he puts... Kendrick in a position. You got to punch the nigga in the face. He puts Kendrick. I'm sorry. He wow, puts, I'm sorry. <laughs> simultaneously, he puts Kendrick in a position now where if he comes turbo super scion with the crazy response, he look like the guy that's still on bullshit and immature. <laughs> so right. like, yeah. he got the diss off. Then he's like, oh, you know, man, it ain't really sitting right on my soul. I'm, ah. And he mature, yes. yes. And then Kendrick's like, damn, if I go crazy on this nigga, now I'm looking like a bully. Yeah. That's why I'm saying your boy Robert Green that wrote the laws of 48 Laws of Power. Yeah. He's sitting back. See, I told you. Exactly. Hey, yo, this motherfucker's read my book. <laughs> Tell you. <laughs> Tell you some next level shit. Smart brother. That 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 is pretty smart if you look at it like that. If that's what if that was the case, right. and we which have it no could idea. be. And both of them motherfuckers' middle name is Lamar, by the way. Fun wow. fact. Really? Yeah, them and West Side Gun. Hmm. Fun wow. fact, all three of them got the middle name Lamar. That's crazy. Yeah, I be knowing my rap know privilege. I know that. my shit, yeah. <laughs> I learned something new today, goddammit. Yeah, I didn't. I done learned so much from you over the years, King, as a motherfucking other guy. Well, thank you, goddammit. I'm brother. <laughs> but, you know, that that apology came quickly. Yes, it did. And so, and you know, and like you said, at, like, at first I was like, oh, lame. But then I was like, nah, actually, that was some G shit. That, like, for him to just be like, you know what? Yeah. I'm out. But I hear what... What you're saying over there that that would be brilliant yeah you shut that shit down real fast some, mil- <laughs> some military minded strategic next level shit got him <laughs> everybody's like man that's so cool because the ogs are saying that's mature that's what it is girls is like yeah he's, that's nice you yeah know what I mean? you know yeah, but I'll, I'll say this man if they had just kept it like records and no emotions and it was just like on, on some fun shit like mm-hmm. some actual just competitive right that that's always dope for hip hop because yeah. you know that's what we're built on. Well, can I ask you a question? Yeah. When was the last time there was a hip hop 
battle that never got emotional. Mm. Wow. Mm. Name one. That is a great question. Never got emotional. <laughs> I don't think there's one that there's exists There's never like that. been one. Well, yeah. Did so that, I mean that that doesn't unless exist. you set it up. Unless I call Money B and say, "Hey, Money B, we're gonna cause Let's controversy. I'm gonna diss you tomorrow. Then you're gonna follow well, and respond and diss me the next day." But it's not the same. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying yeah. you could totally fabricate now, it. Now you know who did do that was talk about the genius Shock G on an album. Him and Biz were kind of like capping on each other on a record that they did. It was like right. And they talked about it first. Yeah, it's on the record. Yeah, yeah. It's on the it's on the digital underground record. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And they were basically it was kind of like to, it was like th towards the end of the whole quote unquote East Coast West Coast bullshit, right? Mm, right. Okay. But they did a record together, clowning each other just to show this is stupid. Right. Right. And then at the end of the record, it's like nah, we're friends. It's all love. It's all love. Yeah. Right. As it should be. Yeah. yeah. But but outside of that, like, can you name me one real hip hop battle that? Did not get no. emotional. Not really, what, though. Not what, that. Not that I can recall. There's, what about Kumo D and Cool J? Oh, that was emotional. They there, didn't like each other. Was some oh, emotion, okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. They did they not. Like like they did not. Yeah, fucking yeah. Kumo D had the Kango under the Jeep, crushing his red Kango. Well, and they said, you know, "How you like me? Now? What was it?" Uh, he said, "Bro, uh, you took my style. I'm taking it back." I mean, yeah. if, if, if 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 I mean <laughs> Mo I mean, D. I'll tell you what. It years years later with time, yeah, all those beefs go away and they heal up for yeah. sure. Because a lot of them guys get down get, now. But in those moments, that's what yeah, I'm saying. It's yeah. all emotion. Yeah, Shan right. and, and South Bronx, yeah, and, and uh, that was that was emotion. There was no like yeah. fr friendly competition. Then. Roxanne it, Shante is only good for steady fucking. Yeah, don't rough. say that unless you rough. Yeah. unless you want to say that. Hey, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the ice most ice cold lines anyone could say at the time. Yeah, at the time. Oh my God. Yeah. But, Only good for but steady fun. I would also say <laughs> in real life, at that time, if you would have put KRS one on a stage with Roxanne Shante in a battle, I don't know who would have won. Because right. she that's she didn't make great records. She made great records, but she wasn't like a lyricist, but she could battle live. Right. You know, she knew how to get because if battling on stage was, let me see who I can dish you, but make the crowd support me and cheer me yeah. the most. She could do that. Yep. Like yeah. Like I've seen her. She 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 killed uh, Fruit Kwan from Stetsonic. Why? Uh, she 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 dusted off. She killed a couple of cats. Like it's it's recorded. Wow. Of her live it's, at like the Roxy whatever the fuck. Back giving it to him. And shit. Oh, Damn. Fucking niggas up. Like you didn't you wouldn't know it, but she was a battle rapper. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, that would have been interesting to see because KRS one's that Ooh. like that guy. Oh, yeah. yeah, he no, he but, is that guy. But yeah. but yeah, that would have been interesting to see. I'm surprised they don't like put a show together just right. based off of that shit because they're cool now. Yeah, they're, they're, Shannon and like, KRS one, they're friends crazy. now. Yeah, they're friends now. They've done they've done things with time. Wounds heal. Everything but, does. But in the moments, yeah. Right? Oh man, you if you see if you were to run into each other, it wouldn't even be about on the mic. At least West Coast beefs, they're saying it wouldn't even be about who's rocking the show. We're gonna get in that ass right oh, now. Yeah, uh, yeah, like okay, we gotta leave. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't think it's conducive to the yeah. situation. It's too hot, man. Right? <laughs> but hey, you know. Okay, your best best diss record ever. Oof. Quick. The best diss record Bring ever. It. Damn, that's a good one. I I, I got to say No Vaseline. Facts. What about you? Facts. I agree. What about you? Song, No Vaseline. See, for me, it could be that, but I'll give you two other alternatives and the reason why. I would say To the Break of Dawn. Ooh. Ooh. Right? Because yeah, 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 yeah. he took out four motherfuckers sure in one did. record. Yep. He took out Kumo D, MC Hammer, and Ice-T. By three. himself. Yeah. By, all in one one record. <laughs> yeah. Kind of verse. That is one of the dopest, and, like, Beef, and, you know, and it was jamming. And then the the other one that needs to be considered is uh, dollars and cents with quick this eight. Oh yeah, because that, that is a, that long. Because who wants a record made about them that could be jammed to in the club? Yeah, yeah, because that's, that's, that was in the club. So and, now yeah. everybody jamming off of niggas, killing you. And it's like that, like song, no Vaseline, but that one line, that one infamous line. 
I think is the coldest line oh. ever said That's how in the, the history. G, is the G ain't in you? Yeah, that line Ouch. is like, Oof. you know, <laughs> I've had to explain that to some cats on the East Coast, like the way that hit on the West. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. they didn't really understand what that meant and how hard it hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think they even patched that up, right? Yeah, yeah. they patched it up. Yeah, sure. so it's, it's you know. That was, it, that was, yeah. But now the funny thing is now when when these cats do these records, they perform them. Then they feel funny about yeah. saying the line when they, the the hardest part of the line. Oh yeah, they try to change it or don't say it. Oh yeah, like, oh, oh. they try to cover it up. Yeah, I mean, but why play the song? I, I'll tell you though, what are the one of the craziest diss songs ever? Is it was is Pac Doc? Oh, oh, hit him up. Hit him up. Uh, now that one, it was because that took that that turned it up into a another level that we hadn't seen. Yeah, before. So that kind of took it. That was next level, right? Yeah, yeah. For all the wrong reasons, <laughs> it just and, and, he went there. I'll say this though, uh, Jay Z and Nas too. Ooh, yeah. Those the the two joints they put out there were pretty. You know, in terms of lyricism, right? They're pretty much going at each other pretty nice. But it wasn't like it wasn't the sa- that one I could say was not the emotion. That if there was any one that there wasn't so much uh, emotion behind it, interesting. Oof, it's that one. That's a good observation. Oh. You don't think? No, nah, because if they had run into each other, they weren't going to fight. No, nah, they weren't. They were gentlemen. Yeah. But they were like trying to, you know, scissor each other up on those on the bars. You know what I mean? And right. they left right. it at that because they were both trying to get money. And, 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 you know, like New York motherfuckers, I noticed they like to roll like the way they see like the mafia bosses do it. Like in the mentality of, well, if we have beef, we fuck up the money. Right. Like yeah. we don't want to be having a show and then having a shootout at the show that fucks up the, the money. money. Yeah, you know what I mean. So the family business. Yeah, or or just the look. Period. Because those two guys were trying to move in lanes that rappers usually don't move in. Right. And when you got all this crazy bullshit happening, they're gonna shut the doors on those opportunities for you. So they made sure to keep it more like gentlemanly and make it. It's just here in the songs. No matter what kind of crazy shit we're saying. It's in the songs, and that's probably the only beef that that's happened on. I got to say one thing about that. I think Ether is undeniably in the top three all greatest diss songs for this main fact. Wow. Yeah. He literally it coined the term. He ethered him. Like, ain't nobody saying he no vaseline him. Even though no Vaseline is the illest, uh, illest You're one, right. but motherfuckers be saying, yo, he eating him, yo, he's going to eat to him. Kendrick going to eat to uh, J. Cole. Like, it became yeah. the it verb. Like, yeah. that's, that's a whole other level. Yeah. You know no, I mean? no, no, no. That's, yeah. that's a hell of yeah, an so, impression he left there. So they all have their own thing that makes them unique yeah. and, yeah. and yep. special about it. Now, wait a minute. Didn't you, you and Cube had some shit, yeah, right? Yeah, we had we So had how did ours. that work out? Oh, we're cool now. Shit, we've we've done tours. Uh, we went to uh, Australia. We went to Europe. We've done some shows in the states. So, and, and you know, but it was during pretty, that, I was about to it say, was what, at crazy. What, at what level? What was the, was it? Was it what? What was the level of the turn up level of that? Ooh, like it, meaning, it like was, it was getting pretty crazy. It, like before, we we made sure that we deaded that like. Before any of our people, right? So, at, at, so at a point, like, it was like, was it an on-site type shit? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we, you, we were talking some crazy shit to each other, so on-site it would have happened. But like, you know, the thing was, is that all the cubes people were our friends too. So we were like, does it look yeah. like us like fighting with our friends? You know yeah, what I mean? If it's hard, if him and I get get it off on a one-on-one, cool. You know what I mean? But uh, like we. Didn't yeah. want to involve all our peoples, and they, you know, they kind of didn't know my background neither. Yeah, and that that played a factor in too, because you know, then those guys want to start stepping in, and once they come in, it's yeah, then it it's turns a into something else, different thing, you know. So, fortunately, cool heads prevailed, and you know, we had a conversation as men, and put Working. that behind us, and you know, we're able to go on and work together at like Shaq. Um, salute to to the big man. He's the first one to put us on a track together. Ooh, oh wow! Uh, on a Jack song. Diesel. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I think nice. uh, what was it called? Uh, Men of Steel or something like that. Oh, wow. that uh, Which album was that? It's wow. On, I think on his. Uh, it was for a movie he did, right? Yeah. Something like that. I think it. Was, yeah. For Steel. Steel. And yeah. it's uh, Ice Cube, Peter Guns, uh, Shaq, and myself. Oh, wow. And that was the first joint 
that you know we did and video that we did together okay. after the beef got squashed. But yeah, it was pretty serious. So <laughs> fun fact while we're on that, you know, Peter Guns, he used to write a lot of Shaq's stuff. Oh really? Mm -hmm. He used to write for yeah. Shaq. Peter got bars. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Guarantee Peter know how to eat a <laughs> You see them on the reality shows? Yeah. Oh my god. Then he god. turned into a different guy. Oh my god. That's what that that's what birthed Cardi B. Yeah, the she she spazzed on him on an episode and that shit went viral and here we are. Love and hip hop. Yeah. Oh, that's where he's on now? Yeah. And that's where, Peter, and that's where he's Cardi on? that's then. Yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's wait where... a minute. So here's the thing. You know what he turned that into? He became the host of Cheaters. He became the host of so Cheaters. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Host yeah. Of he's hosted Cheaters host, now. He's the host of oh Cheaters. Yeah, that's amazing. He made he turned his <laughs> cheating into a career. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna now expose cheaters. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. I know exactly how you get down. <laughs> yeah. Talk about rad. flipping it. That's rap. <laughs> yeah. Guy like Peter. Guaranteed. Expose Peter, all the cheaters. Know about cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. See, real MCs Peter, make the rhyme immediately. Know about cheaters. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Shout out to Peter Gunn. Salute to Peter. I got to get him up here when, when man, he's you in have LA, to. man. Yeah. That's the homie right there. And play that game. Remember they laced Which us. Which one of these are with? Them? Remember they laced us with the Compton niggas know how, the Inglewood niggas know how. That shit was hard when they flipped yeah, the L.A. version. The L.A. version. Well, they, did, they did a Bay Area version, too. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. they, they did every version around they, the country. Yeah, That's what I'm did. talking they, about. They, Peter Guns, they, Lord Tariq, man. They did. Yeah. yeah, they did a version for all regions. That's I'm hard. Assuming. I didn't know they. Because there, there was a Bay Area one. See, that's that's when you tailor make shit, yeah, you know, like because because people are gonna respond to that. Mm -hmm. yep. That's why, like, when, when Naughty by Nature does that song, the craziest, he's naming all the cities that they got bucked in, and like, you know, right. And it's keeping their base while and out. Oh, did you hear they mentioned us right now? Up, oh, yeah, keep it going. going crazy. Yeah, man. I remember seeing Ghetto Boys and 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 Bushwick Bill out here dropping those West Coast bees on them. I was like, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that can only happen if you perform it live. You have to perform yeah. it live, what we and, said in the first and, circle. And, and there you go. You know where I'm going. That's how we do when we perform together and we do the Humpty Dance. I don't never say the Burger King bathroom. If we in if we in Morongo Casino, I'll be like, uh, I once got busy in the Morongo bathroom. You know what I mean? Wherever, I always flip yeah. it to where we at. It's and the they love it. Wherever we are. Right? Yeah. Nice. But you can't do that yeah. if the track is playing behind you. Right. No, you can't, you can't ad lib that. Mm -mm. And 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 you know you can't custom make the shit because when you know your song that good you can or that well I should for proper grammar that good yeah that, that good. well that's sorry. good uh, <laughs> smoke smoking that good yeah, smoking that good, smoking that good. <laughs> um, that's good when you know your song that well you could flip little parts like that and yeah. get that yes. little pop from the crowd that's like. Oh, did yep. you hear he just mentioned us right now? He said oh, us. Oh, that's Dude. I love it, man. <laughs> Everybody yeah. wants to feel like you're giving them attention and you you there for them. Hell yeah, the acknowledgement. <laughs> I, you know, and I know Pedro's going to get mad at me, you know what I'm saying? Because oh, he's no. probably listening out there. But, like, when they were doing Rolling Loud this, uh, you know, a few said weeks back. the wrong back, city? No, 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 no. He didn't <laughs> say the wrong city. Uh, uh, Kodak Black came and did a feature on someone's set. I can't remember exactly who it was, but... Homie didn't even know the verse. It he like he was just going the same shit we were talking about earlier. You know, like not knowing the song. He was up there doing the the feature. But it just played. Yeah, he was just in and out, and he was dancing around to it. And then you probably felt like you seen the same thing I saw because it looked like he was trying to roll a blunt right there on. Yeah, stage. they it's just like, stop and they let it jam, wow. and then they do the, looking on their phone and shit. Oh yeah, yeah. and the crowd is actually <laughs> doing the lyrics. Right. And oh man, he's actually being entertained by the crowd. Hey, listen. Yeah, the worst. I get paid to come let the crowd entertain me, yeah. man. Show me, mother. I wish I had that job. Can I do a show where the crowd does the, all the work and I just get to watch and dance? And to just bounce. Just bounce and the, do ad libs, dude. I would love to do that. Hey, you know what's crazy is is skirt, and this skirt. is this is not the same thing, but this chick is doing this where it's like everybody who comes to this particular show, mm -hmm. it's a full blown fucking sing along on purpose. <laughs> Not bec you know, it's it's like a thing. Like they, you know, like they they advertise the show as a full on fucking sing along. So when you people that come to this particular show, they know all the fucking songs, and it's a packed house, and whole goddamn place is singing. Now there's probably a few people not really singing because they're just there for the experience and they want to see it, but they're not really singers. Mm -hmm. But 
it's the trippiest shit. Like, cause it's 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 not like they're picking and choosing songs to sing to. They're singing through the whole fucking experience. Wowzers. Now, let me. I want to ask you guys two questions. What you think about? First of all, so what we we started to do. What I just did is, you know, cause now when you perform, this, you know, there's screens, right? Right. At every show. So what I did and what I'm doing is taking um, our show instrumentals, but the videos are lyric videos oh, so that cool. the crowd can sing along with us. Dope. You know what I mean? Like, especially the verses like Freaks of the Industry, right? Shock's not here. So we do Shock's verse, but the words of Shock's verse are on the screen. That's so dope. I'm like, sing along. That's dope. And that's dope, right? Hell yeah. To, Hell yeah. To do that. But... Um, now, this is something that I think is dope, but I want to ask your opinion on. So, you know, I was at one of Snoop's shows, right? And he has the teleprompter yeah. at the front yeah. of the stage with the lyrics. Yeah. I want one of those. I want one, too. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want one of those. Can I have one? Yeah, because that's yeah. fucking dope. You could do, like, because, you know, like, it's songs people ask you that, you know, you may not have performed in 10 years. Yeah. And you, if you could just say, bust it. You kind of know it, but you need, like, yeah, you, you yeah. need to know the first shit. If the words are there. If you got a good teleprompter guy yeah. too, who's not pushing it pushing oh, on man. Your fast. But hey, you know, like, yeah, because it's a lot of songs to like try <laughs> and, to keep in the and database. And if you want to keep the show fresh and you're trying to like, okay, well, let's let's do a song that's not on the set list. Yeah, let's just roll. It's really the only way you could do it unless you're fucking Bruce Springsteen, but, which like this dude holds like these crazy rehearsals where you, you got to learn 200 songs. I need to find out where to get yeah. that though. Or a teleprompter? Yeah. Oh, that those ain't hard to find. It's, it's really the operator. That yeah. you is got it is? It. Yeah, because you want someone that that can it's that can time time it at your pace. That like it's not going too fast or too. Yeah. Slow or if you. you don't get it, they make sure they don't go without you. Right. Okay. Like doing TV. Yeah. I, I used to run one I, on tour once. Oh yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Who's? Yeah. Uh, That's good to know, sir. Uh, we'll be calling tour. you. First. It was uh, Jonathan. He uh, had a teleprompter on that tour and. I ran it for him. I know nice. people probably trip that we don't have a teleprompter up there. Like, how the hell? Yeah, how the fuck? Because yeah. we do a lot of songs, and, and we flip them up, too. But, I mean, you know, we want to have the ability to flip up any song at any point. Yeah. And the yeah, only way to. really That's to do that. know it. Yeah, yeah, and the only way to do that is the two two ways. Yeah. One is to rehearse the shit before you actually do it, yeah. which we try to do. Yeah. And the other is if you're going to like pop it off like you said, you it's a song you've done before but it's been like 10, 15 years. If you saw it, you can actually do it. Yeah. Um that's what those things are for. Yeah, like, get me so going. You, let me give you an obscure song or one you ain't heard in a long time. Teleprompter's sure. good for that. Or even the songs you do every night, it's still good to have it yeah. there. To have it there yeah. as reference, you know. Look. Yeah. Like for me, I don't mind it. Shit, I seen Ozzy Osbourne rocking that Hell shit. Hell yeah. That dude it was, it was right. one of my idols forever. Yeah. I just I didn't seen... look any less of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I had never thought of it until I seen Snoop's. I was like, this fucking genius. Yeah. Oh, I need so that thing. Dumb. Well, Jonathan's you know thing with it is that like you know it would sometimes you know he would be tripping out on the crowd you know or something something would take him and then he could look down and know exactly where. He was in, right. you know what I mean? So he'd be like, okay, cool. So good, you know, it, it helped to know their music extremely well. Yeah. And just like get you rid of them. Like, yeah, That's then, real. Yeah. You could be so into the like, the the, the experience of what you're doing, you kind of go beyond the music for a second. You just, just oh, I'm yeah. a human. Ah! And then it's like, oh, I got to be on, I got to hit this cue right here. Boom. And yeah. you, you know that, that, you know what I mean? Look having, at it, the, you know, having it there. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Whoop. Bam. Yep. Yeah. You got to have it right there. Yeah. Because that those human moments happen. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Talk about it. And I'll right. tell you what, though. And, and when you have that teleprompter there, you're only leaning on it for a while. Because once you got it and you're 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 saying it while you're reading it, you're applying it to memory. And eventually, you don't even need that. It's just yeah. there for reference. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is for reference. Not like yeah. you're sitting there. And really yeah. just for that yeah. first line. <laughs> I'm going to stand right in front of the teleprompter and read this <laughs> Yeah, shit. it's really for that first line. Hey, it's all you know about what? the first line. You know what I've been noticing lately, though? Um, and it's 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 got nothing to do with rap shit, but there is a similarity with some of this shit, is that have you noticed like some comedians, when they do their bit, they'll break out their notes on their Yeah, on their to know what the next mm -hmm. part of the set. Th that's a crazy thing, because comedians would you know, never did that before. Nah, was, not, yeah, not back in the day. They had to have their their shit locked in. 
But now it's a, it's a different day. People are cool with that. Speaking of that, like, so I'm wondering when we're gonna see a rapper go up who barely knows his shit and he's rapping wrap his it shit, off his like, phone. Yeah, hey, what's cracking? I've seen that. Ooh. I have not seen I've, that yet. I've seen but somebody I know I'm rap going to. On, on stage. On, 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 on stage. stage. I believe so. I've seen it. I've seen like, it like I wasn't I, there. I've seen, I've seen it seen like it. when when people go to like oh, radio yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, yeah, oh hey, yeah, bust, a rhyme. bust yeah, a sixteen. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. might bust out their phone and look That's at it. That's where I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. I've seen it. I, I've, yeah, I've seen, I've it. seen yeah. that. Yeah. But in terms of the way that a comedian will go on stage and do his bit or her bit and have like part of the material there that they're looking at, I've never seen a rapper do that yet. But I feel like it's coming. It's coming. Oh yeah. Why not? It's coming. I've, 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 Let me just be the I'm first to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be fronting like I'm reading it. I'll know it already. I'm yeah. just going to be fronting like I'm reading it. So that, oh, he read his shit. Oh. Did you see? Wait, when's your next show? I might beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still got a few weeks. Oh, now, shit. We I got like a month. You got me. I remember at the end of Flavors when we were, you know, 2005, beginning of 2006, uh, it, it, I, we noticed it was different when MCs were coming to the show and they would, you know, we would ask them, oh, you want to freestyle? Then they would just pull out their BlackBerry and then they would just go off that. Like, I, that's when I knew it was just rather than it, it was a, like. It was yeah. changing. Yeah. Yeah, see, was, yeah. And that's Friday Night Flavors with no cameras was on them back then. Yeah. So they could sit there on the air and be just holding it really going in. But yeah. it's a different day now. Everything yeah. is, we see everything, what you're doing. Everything is recorded. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's, so, that's the, when I knew. Shout out to J-Rock. <laughs> Things are changing. Hey, man. Shock everybody. Oh yeah. Well, you know, well, do you? All right. So, over the years, you have so many verses and so many yeah freestyles, right? Right. But when someone says, "Yo, B, bust a freestyle," and you're like, "Uh," uh but you have so many. Yeah, that's like the you, crazy part. Yeah, and it's like I don't even know what you don't even well, really know what to do, the, like the, how to access it at that point because that's you what have I'm saying. so much locked in. Yeah, and then have you ever heard song like you know? Because you'll do features on somebody's song, like you'll do the song, and then you never hear the song again. Have you ever yes. heard a song that you're on and you're listening to yourself? Like, When did I do that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, or, all the time. Or waiting for what you're yeah. about to say next. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit, that was dope. Like, I don't even remember doing this. Like, oh, these guys so will tell good. me, like, hey, man, uh, that feature you did with so-and-so, I did a feature with so-and-so? Right. Yeah. Like, so I, I had yeah. somebody here, well, even, right? I had somebody on the show. We are talking about some shit. And... We were talking. Somebody said, "Oh man," uh, or I don't know. I I think I said we should we should lock in and do, do something song. together. Because what do you mean we did a remix <laughs> to this song over here? About you don't remember? I'm like oh shit, I don't. Because you know, before right, and let's just say the first half of the '90s. Like let's just say from from ninety for me from ninety one to about ninety six, right? Ninety seven. Sony would not necessarily let me do features or 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 cameos uh, or any of that shit uh, that kept me too specifically to cypress hill uh, and i think a lot of artists went through that same shit so there wasn't a lot of collaborations happening yet for real so they would just put us like you couldn't tell them like hey i'm gonna do a song with someone they'd be like no you're not they would have to approve it and they'd be like nah, the so, doing it. and nobody was really doing a lot of that yet Mm. Nah, I wasn't that, right. that cross. My shit but. came a lot later with the features and stuff like that. At least probably on year, I'm going to say eight or nine for me. That's when I start getting calls like, hey, come jump on this or that. And then it becomes like first the first five you could keep track of. Mm -hmm. After that, it's like, shit, man, I don't remember half the shit yeah. I did. Or you do some shit, especially for like independent artists, and then it never comes out. Right. Right. And or you don't know if it comes out. Or it comes out later. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck is that? You're like, oh, <laughs> don't you remember we did that like, you know, six years ago? Yeah. It's like, oh, I mean, shit. shit I got uh, fucking songs with features that never can. I got a song I did with um with Chuck D, right? Whoa. Never put it out, but we recorded it in like 2012. But I still have it. I'm sure wow. he doesn't remember it. <laughs> it's it's Rad. it's crazy because like, you know, it, I, we we often wondered like who has the who has the stats? And I think we even looked it up. Like who has the most features in hip hop? Mm. Like and you know how many does one rapper have? Like you know that are counted. Who 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 is it? Oh well, the man who claims to be the man who has of all times. You know, like he, he puts it out like it's part of his resume bio, or whatever is cocaine. He says he has the most features of like any artist in any genre. 
Like wow. that's like part of his like. Oh yeah, like he his, does say well as bio, as, like, as, a, as a singer, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But as a rapper, yeah, that'd be the yeah the, someone who's uh, like, yeah, and I think if Nate Dogg was alive, he would have been Ooh, the guy with yeah. right. The but has anybody researched that? What was it last time? Um, according to a Vlad TV's website, it says Snoop Dogg at 583 features. Damn. Little Wayne is right below him with 430. Mm. Uh, see, I was gonna say Little Wayne, my first. Cause little, there was a point where Little Wayne was on everything. Yeah, I think I have. Bussing. I think I have above above a hundred easily. It's just I, I don't, don't know. I don't know if I got five hundred or <laughs> t- I no. I don't have that. And, and and if I did, I would not remember not even a portion of that shit. Yeah. Hey, how many if, do you think you got in Spanish? In Spanish Fe- features in Spanish. Uh, I don't know. Maybe ten. Okay. Okay. Maybe. I got a I shit. That's an interesting one right there. I never thought of that, but yeah, there, I, I have a few, for sure. In the last, I'm gonna say six years, I've had a few. Yeah, shit's but, growing. If I if I had a hundred, not not a hundred came out. Yeah, you know? that I I had a few with Dre that didn't come out. There was a couple that did, and and a couple that didn't, mm-hmm. uh, and then everything else that I know of has has come out except for. Maybe one or two other things, but like most most of it landed somewhere. And and I've heard that about Dre from a few like Too Short and some other people say they did songs with Dre, and then they don't come out. Yeah, like, is that disappointing? When you be like, I, yo, I, I just I, did some shit with Dr. Dre. I think if you first if you're there at first and you don't know what the deal is with that shit, yeah, it's probably disappointing because- But you knew at the time that it- I knew already, you know, because it had been told to me, like, I don't, like, set your heart out on anything (laughs) because sometimes- it's just work for experience. <laughs> yeah, you know you're, what making, I mean? you're making a movie with Martin Scorsese. Like, so when he hit, gonna come out. so that when he hit me up for group therapy, which was, uh, you know, on Aftermath. Yeah. Um, it was for uh, what was the song? Um, East Coast West Coast Killers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Mario. like, I went down there. I did my shit, and I didn't expect anything from it. I didn't mm. know if I was gonna make it. I didn't expect to make it. I had no. Wow. No, no expectation at all. Just because I'd heard, like, well, you know, he may have you do it, he may not use it. Wow. So I just yeah. went in there for the experience. Every time I go with Dre, it's basically to have the just be there and you know work how he works and, and see, see you know, like have the experience and you know the friendship and the love and all that shit. But I never have an expectation because when you do, that's when your heart gets broken. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I went there, I did that, he put that shit out. I was like, oh, hell yeah, I made the cut. And then he called me for something else. I think it was a song called Remember Me. Mm-hmm. And Sticky Fingers uh-huh. and a few are uh-huh. on this. And originally I was supposed to be on that song, but he didn't like my verse, so that didn't go. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't tripping about it. I was like, man, this is up to Dr. Dre, shit. Yeah, I mean, it's if it's it's shit. If yeah. it wasn't right, he did me a favor. That's right. the way I look at it, uh, yeah. as opposed to, oh, man, he took my shit off the track. It huh. being, like, salty about <laughs> like it. Like Inspector Deck? I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, maybe he did me a favor, because if my fucking verse wasn't hot, that's yeah. why it's not on there. And I, Because I, I know if I had a hot one, he would have left it on. So I looked at it as opposed to him, like, you know, it, it being a sandbag. It was like, nah, man, he did me a favor. Maybe my shit wasn't up to par at that point. So whenever he calls me... Whether it's to like just like lend an ear, yeah, or, come hear some shit, or he might have an idea, I'll go do it. I, but with no expectations because I know, you no. know, he's got one of the biggest vaults of work that's not come out. Yeah, somebody, you know, because he's Ooh. very selective. And and we talked about this, and you could you could give me your opinion opinion about it. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like there are some giants like like Dre, right, and like Jay Z that. They may want to put out records. They may want to like make music because it's still within them. They're artists. Yeah, you know what I you mean. Never lose that. But you know, to not lose the invincibility of of like, okay, well, mm. let's say I put something out and I don't sell two, three million records. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, how do I look? Does that fuck up my legacy? Does that fuck up my brand? You know, like, okay, maybe I shouldn't put this out because mm. I don't want to take the chance. In the state of that people go to streaming services more than they actually buy units these days, yeah. how do I look? Like, what is it going to take in the streaming 
blindfold for it to be right. um, acceptable. Yeah. That, if I, that if I don't sell these two millions, that these streams are going to be like, this is like, okay, well, I didn't sell two million albums or three million albums, but I got X amount of streams, and that makes up for that. Like yeah, 10 billion streams or whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I don't know. Or are you, say, are you saying, like, if they do that, and it doesn't work, then that's the end of their invincibility. Right. Like dent in the in the armor. Yeah, a, a kink in the armor. Yeah. Well, I did a um, a song where I was asked to do a verse for a DMC song. Oh, cool. And I fucking grew up idolizing Run DMC. Hell yeah. So of course yeah. DMC asked me to do a verse. Oh yeah. You know, I bust on that thing. And it, it hasn't come out. And I'm like, oh. not not like. Super, but I'm just like, damn. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that would be yeah. nice. Yeah. I'm going to call DMC. Uh, because man. that's checklist right there. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Bucket, like, yeah, like, God damn. I bucket list right DMC. there. Like, if you could be, like, doing a song with your idols. That's what I did. And, and for me, that was like, Dre did me a checklist on that first one. Right. Because I got to rap with Dr. I mean, uh, be on a track with Dr. Dre, but also be on a track with KRS-One. Yeah. On Dr. Yeah. Dre song. With Nas, who was With like Nas. the guy in the yeah. moment, as yep. as solo rappers go. Yeah. And RBX, not for nothing, he was a monster too. Yeah, you know absolutely. But, the narrator. But RBX straight. The thing about it is, you know, I still say I did a song with DMC. <laughs> you know, yeah. It never yeah. comes yeah. out. Yeah. I did it. And who know, Who knows, <laughs> man? Because some of these these songs that have been in people's vaults for a while, they rework it, and it eventually makes its way out there. Yeah, because like I said, I have shit of songs with people that I haven't and I I plan to do something you know before it's all said and done it's like somebody should have just it needs to be hurt yeah I feel like so yeah I mean art needs to be um appreciated yeah exactly you can't just make one and sell it for a million I'll tell you what yeah, man you we're in yeah, the you can. we're in the yeah. world of subjective arts yeah. seriously you know what I'm saying because like yeah. we were talking about all that shit to earlier in right. the conversation about how these cats need to get up on game and shit like that. Mm -hmm. It's the same in the art world. We'll see something that maybe one of us looks like like that shit is rudimentary art. That's art. And someone else will come and say, dude, that's genius shit right well, there. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, like what makes a painting expensive? <laughs> right. right. It's just because somebody says it is. Yeah. Right. yeah. Because it's just some fucking sh splashes on the thing, but because you know, Rudimard Ginkenheim did it. It's worth 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. That was an amazing name. That, that, that was great. a yeah. great like name. Rudamart. He said so Rudamart. Like, <laughs> Rudamart. <laughs> like, that one came. That, was big, huh? like, that shit would roll right off. Yeah, Rudamart Ginkenheim. Hey, I want to say congratulations to Missy, Missy Elliott just announced um, out of this world um, the Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott experience her first ever headlining tour, man. Yeah. That's a, no way. Wow. Wow. When? Yeah. Um, when wow. is it? Uh, starts well, July fourth. Starts July fourth with uh, on July 9th. with Ciara, oh. Timbaland, and Busta Rhymes. Yeah, that's wow. gonna be good. That's gonna be big. Yeah, it's gonna Crypto. be Crypto. Com. They're not coming to fucking um, uh, they, Toyota Center. You know, it'll get extended. You know how this works. Yeah, they man. sell this shit out. Everybody wants a piece of it. They're going oh, extended through. Oh, blah, they might blah, be blah, coming blah. back. Let's see. Let's see. I just saw the um, the comedy tour. Was it? Uh, What's the name of it? With uh, Lil Duval and DC Young Fly. Yeah. Oh, that shit good. last night, it was good. It Hell was yeah. fucking good. Those guys are funny, man. Yeah. It's and this dude, Mojo Brooks, you ever heard of him? Mojo Brooks, I don't think he's I've heard funny. of him. He's funny. I guess he's like an internet guy, but he's funny. There's a lot of good, uh, funny internet dudes coming yeah. up. Yeah, but I mean, it, was a, it was a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Word up. Hey, real quick, uh, put your put into the Super Chat, hashtag Be Real TV. For your chance to win a free pair of tickets to All Time High on May 4th. Must be 18 with valid photo ID and claim. Tickets in person, no refunds, no exchanges. Uh, we're picking the winner this Friday. So get down uh, yeah. with the get down. Hey, a lot so, of the homies on that bill. So are you are you seeing like the, the chats and shit? Yeah, yeah, this is all live right now. What are they saying? Oh, we gonna get into that. We gonna get into that before we He's get. He's all in like, "Money V sucks." He's not telling me. Oh, ain't nobody saying that. That's for sure. It's all love over here. You'll see right now. Oh uh, man! With that, let's get into submissions. What? Submissions. 
All right, we got a lot of good submissions today. We even got a bunch from uh, Fresno area. Looked like it was pretty popping over there, B. Oh, yeah, Fresno. So, l- yeah, I didn't get a chance to say it, but salute to everybody, our staff in Fresno. Uh, salute to everybody that came out to the grand opening. It was off the chain, I got to tell you. Uh, people came out, represented uh, Dr. Green Thumbs in Fresno. We are glad and proud and honored to be there. And, uh, man, people came up and showed so much love, man. So salute. Hey, we out Digital Underground. We out there at Fresno July 13th. Oh, oh yeah. you got to go go visit oh, the I spot. Oh, I got to go to the spot. Yeah, yes, yeah. you got to. I'll make sure. Hey, hit me beforehand. I'll make sure they look out for you. Yep. Get the swag back. Yes. yes. Salute to the fans. That's my partner over there that uh, we opened this location in. And, uh, man, so just salute and much love. Y'all, we'll got, str- um, y'all got mushrooms and shit in there? I don't know if we got shrooms in there uh, yet. Get some shrooms. But it could be. <laughs> fuck that, with it. It could be. I fuck with it. You, I got something for you before you leave. Oh, don't shit. even trip. <laughs> you know how we do. Come on, man. <laughs> it's like, don't even trip. <laughs> You're going to trip. <laughs> uh, we're going to show you some more shit throughout the week uh, from Fresno and stuff like that. But just salute. If you're in Fresno, go check out the shop. It's a beautiful shop. A lot of fucking flavors there and great staff. Um, they will help you. All right. All right, this is cool. We got Rome saying, what's up to the table and crew? Had a great time at the Fresno opening. My daughter, my girlfriend, and myself camped out since 12 a.m. Yeah, people were camping out. It was almost like we put out an album that people w- were waiting for. Oh. It was crazy. Y'all are all legends. All of y'all are legends. I'm saying. That's yeah. Fresno represent. That's love right it's there. It's been cold lately, too. They ain't playing. Ooh, it was yeah. cold that night. Yeah. Hey, we were driving up. Um, hey, look at y'all. Beautiful people. We were driving up the night before, and I swear to God, like, we were hitting places that it was like 33 degrees in the middle on that grapevine. Boy, it was cold. Man. Bakersfield was cold. It was like 37 degrees yeah, out there. Yeah, man. It gets cold out there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Shout out to Baco. All right. In Fresno. Yeah, shout out to Rome. He got all the goodies. Hell yeah. Nice. Oh, oh, Rome got all the goodies. Yeah, he do. There's some really good flour out there, man. I got to say, like, some local brands. Out there that are producing some really good flour. So when you when you do open up spots, do you, you support the local? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's for sure. You have to. I'm, Plus, there's a lot of great like products coming from some of the locals. You yeah. know what I mean? So you want like, to right? shine a light on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got a spot up north? Uh yeah, we have one on Mission. In Frisco. Yeah. Nice. Spread love. Like, you know the where? Green Thumb Way. It's uh. <sighs> Get the cross street. We have the address up there, right, Bolton? Uh, yeah. Let me uh try. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go back up to the bay in a couple of weeks. Word but up. like I said, we're gonna go to Fresno. I'll definitely slide there. I'll let them know. Yeah. All right. Yes, all right. Sir. Next in here, we got Dean Jones. He's having an all keto breakfast with good gut with good gut health in mind. Yes. A little nice. keto sourdough with two poached free range eggs, broccoli sprouts, and uh, some uh, turmeric kraut. Listen, to some people, this does not look delectable. <laughs> <laughs> but I it, is, it. it is good for you, yeah. and I would have it too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it wouldn't be my first choice, like, but yeah, I eat it. Oh, no good kidding. Kidding. He's also saying some uh, avocado and some smoked salmon. Yes, all that, yeah. all that is good for you, and it'll make you shit in it. See you at Erewhon, pimp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's dropping them kids off, boy. Damn, <laughs> them locks. What do you mean off the house? <laughs> they unlocking with the locks. <laughs> <laughs> We got a Mr. Argo just showing off a little steak for supper. Got some mashed Ooh. potatoes and some greens. Mm, that's more your style? Party meal. Mm. Where that Red Rooster at? You know, a... this sounds redundant to these people that watch, man, but this is the torturous part of the show. They know we're high as fuck, and, yeah. they, and then they're just showing us food. Oh, good food? Yeah. yeah. Ah, see, I see, love see it. See how that works? I, love I see it. what you're doing now. This is their joke. What's the hot sauce you doing with that, though? <laughs> Red Rooster on mine's. All right. Okay, I'm fucking with it. Let's go. Bring <laughs> it. We got Rose up in here saying, "Here's the breakfast that the hubby made this morning. The ladies are a uh, peekabooing bit." Tits yeah. out, huh? Peekabooing. Right. Here we yeah. go. How you like your yeah, egg? Baby. Tits out. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Seuss. Hell yeah! Look at that. Yeah. 
I think Lit. you're. I think you're. you're oh, this, is that ham? Yeah, that's, that's ham. Dr. Seuss. Oh, ham. Is that, he's going ham. He's I going thought it was bacon. Ham. I was like, you need a little bit more time on that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little bit, right? Nah, no, it's ham. Oh, wow. Apparently, he's I need ham. My, <laughs> you going ham? Go ham. Hell yeah. Go ham, fam. Ham, fam. Hey man, I want to say this real quick before we go to the sure. next one. Um, salute and, and rest in peace to our bro Jerry Davis. Who that, I wanted. I was gonna bring that up because he was the one that introduced, introduced us way us. back in the day, so, man. Yeah, because the day, the day I met B, I met the poetess. That's right. Salute to the poetess. Salute. Oh, it is. Mello, I think was there. Mello, yeah. My and, big brother, God. And I think that was it. Like that. that, that was, and was us, you yeah. guys were the first people I met when we came to LA. Yeah. He was working at ASCAP. Yep. And he was from the Bay, but he was managing you guys, right? Yeah. So he just, you know, locked us in. This is 1989. Ooh. And we just... He was, you know, he was mostly guiding us because under his contract with ASCAP, he couldn't manage a group. Mm -hmm. he, had to, he had to quit ASCAP if he wanted to, because it was a conflict of interest, right? So right. he just sort of helped us get our first publishing deal without our publishing deal before we had our record deal. Nice. Whoa. We had our publishing deal before we even had a fucking manager. I mean, Jerry was on it, man. Yeah, he, Jerry Davis. He really never got enough flowers in this game. So I just yep. want to say to his spirit, man, thank you. And he got the poetess, our record deal at Interscope. Hell yeah. First female signed to Interscope. Um, and she was doing a radio. And he, like you said, he locked us in. Yeah. And that was it. Salute. And, and you know, I also want to say this too, because, you know, I think present day, and because you've been in the game so long, and now you're like, you know, you're this icon that's known, Dr. Green Thumb, the weed is, is your thing, right? But I don't think people realize how much work you used to put in as an <laughs> MC. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you put in work, bro. I, I seen tried. it from the beginning. Major. I try. I got to play you some it. new shit I did with yeah. Psycho Less. I seen it from the beginning. Like, I watched Psycho your Lewis. whole shit. Yes. From the beginning. It's, it's, it's been a journey. This is yeah. for sure. I watched it, and I don't think a lot of people know that. You know, it, it is you know, it is one of those things where, in terms of the weed shit, it gets that is diluted the thing or that confused. sort of. Well, it sort of overshadows the music, right? And we right. have to tell people, you know, in interviews at times, like, "Hey, man, it's about our music first. We're not yeah. just about weed. Weed is one of the messages that that we speak on." Is yeah. it the main main message? No, but that's the way that the media always portrayed it. You know, life was the message through a lot of the songs we were talking about. And cannabis, you know, like with the weed shit, we were, you know, doing one or two songs per album and then sprinkled with, you know, that we smoke here and there throughout the yeah, song. Yeah, that's, not what, you, like that's that. not what you came in the game as. Yeah, but that, you know, they would... They would picture or paint us yeah, this way, people right? chose. Yeah, right. So yeah. that's what I say. I want to, I want to share that well, that, that I saw it. Like if you didn't have bars, you wouldn't even have got to that point. True that. It would have never. Nobody would have cared. I appreciate right. You'd that. You'd have been much. like a lot because a lot of people smoke weed. True that. And, Talk about it. And, I mean, not not even a diss, but like Afro man, right? Right. I don't know if that means anything. No, I hear you. I hear you. I was going to say, and you some motherfucking style master, my guy. Throughout Thank you. the years, mad styles. Like, you know, like like a lot of, you know, not people don't talk enough about, like, which rappers have a, a wide range of styles over different, like, for example, you Dr. Green Thumb. When that song come on, your flow for that song is for that song. It's a locked right. in thing. But yeah. you listen to all the different albums throughout the years, different songs. Like people talk about how De La famous De La for, switching, too. for switching their styles per right. song. You like that to me. Yeah. You know what Thank I mean? Thank you. My brother. Thank you for noticing that. Come on, I'll man. be trying. <laughs> you know? Yo, yo Q-Tip said something once. He said on, in the All The Rap movie, he was like, yo, you know, people get so caught up in my voice, they got to get past my voice to hear what I'm doing. And I think... Similarly, your right. voice is so extreme that people are caught up in the experience of that. Right. But those of us that know, we know. Yeah, I think yeah. some yeah. people like, I think Mace caught some of that as well. Yeah. Mace is a dope rapper, but I think because it's such a laid back right. flow that you don't really peep the bars. Yeah. Right. You get the bars later. Yeah. Right. I think I get some of that as well. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, really, for sure. Because you got another it. platinum voice. Your voice just lay on the track so smooth. Voice that are, they don't, they don't voice, catch it. Yes, voices that are distinct like that, that cut through in a different way. Sometimes the bars, you know, yeah, are like get, secondary to what they're hearing that 
because it's a tone that's pleasurable to them. And right. Fuck what they're saying. This shit just sounds good. Yeah. And then they like what I'm saying is they they go and learn about it later. And they're like, oh, right. man, that's what he was saying. That's even doper. Right. Hey, let me add on with this. Like you brought up, you said him putting in work. Right. Right. Here's something that I can relate to you with on this. The, your rap voice. Is a it's like you flexing a muscle. See, right. some rappers they yell, but it's not the same thing as just I'm yelling. But like for me, this voice the whole time I'm speaking, it's like I'm flexing because I don't always sound like this when I'm right. in the shower. You get what I'm saying? Right. And we hear your speaking voice. I have a different speaking voice. Right. But I'm we we in entertainment mode right now, so right. shit is on. But the point I'm making is with you is. You ain't yelling. You hitting a certain pitch and you holding it. And you've been holding that motherfucker for 35 <laughs> years, bro. Like, I mean, that shit is amazing. And people don't really understand that. But I understand. Because I've been holding it for about eight years now. Much love, man. My brother. Come on. I mean, I see you. I see and you. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? That's real shit. My G. All right, what else you got over there? Uh, we got Mizzle just saying, uh, wanted to give a big shout to you guys. I was watching from the crib from you guys at the Cannabis Cafe. It was a good night and great vibes. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Look at Les up there. My guy got yeah. it. Oh, oh, yeah. He had a great <laughs> set that night, too, man, I got to yeah. say. That's my yeah. guy. The world we all had some famous. good ones, man. Yeah, he, he, he comes and hosts the show here on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, that's my, that's my, I've been knowing Les for years. I've beaten us Juju. Those are my guys. Matter yeah. of fact, Les on my upcoming mixtape. Yeah. Speaking I, of unreleased, he did a track for us that we didn't. Yeah, we got a joint. That's yeah. another one. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. produced the track for us that we never. Man. Well, yeah. he's here, shit. You know, he comes back. You got to come back through beat. much. He's ready. He's always ready. Oh, yeah. yeah Yo, where it. that next Dankalation at? Was it the Dankalation? That's his joint, right? His, his compilation? Yeah. I it, think so, yeah. Dank God. Dank God. Dank God. Dank God. Pardon yeah. me. Yeah. That's, I got something for that. That's God. pretty yeah. good. I like that. All right. Yeah. And the last one so far, we got Von Dubia saying, yo, the Be Real TV live event at the Cannabis Cafe was off the hook. Hell Big yeah. Big shout to you guys and Psycho Lazy. Well, I'm glad y'all liked it, because uh, once we come back off of this tour, we're going to do another one with the OG Cannabis Cafe. Oh, salute to them, and salute to y'all. Hell yeah. Von Dubious, what up, man? This is like, th that was like the first time I spun a straight-up remix set. Yeah, you a, did it live in front like, of people. Yeah, it's like, don't, normally, you know, we do this shit here <laughs> yeah, on what? our mix show. Yeah. His name is Von Dubious. Von Dubious. Von Dubious. Yeah. Shout, Sun out, to, shout out to Sun Dubious. He Ralph was there. M. He was there too somewhere. Oh no, he didn't show up that night. That's right. He had some oh, shit going yeah. on. I think he had a God. studio. Sun Dubious. My God, man. Oh, yeah. I love Sun Dubious. He was. He 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 was uh gonna try to be here, but he had some shit cracking. Nice. Otherwise, he would have been here with us. Bro, right there, man. Nice, cool. Mr. Bartz. All right. He had always had the ill freestyles too on the radio. Oh yeah. He, Bust off the dome. Yeah, he's crazy with it. Fuck, that's my God, man. What's up, it's Everlast, and you're watching the highest show in the world. Yo, what's up? We're Wait. Escape, and we was just rocking with the Dr. Green yes. Thumb show. The, the highest, highest show, show in, in the, the world. world. Yeah, man, it's Jeezy. Jeezy, we're all about to be on the Dr. Green Thumb show. Highest show in the world. Dr. Green Thumb Show, man. You already know what it is. What's up, y'all? It's Lil Cece. I'm on the Dr. Green Thumb Show, the highest show in the world. What's happening? It's G Perico at the Dr. Green Thumb Show, the highest show in the world. Tune in right now. Big shout out to Be Real TV. From Jesse Borrego and Crucito, Los Vatos Locos Forever. Word up. Uh, we got a mix show after this show. Dr. Green Thumb mix show uh, popping off exclusively on Twitch right after this. B underscore Real TV is the place. Check out C Lo and myself. We're going to pop off a video mix today. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. Um, come join us. If you're a member of the home site, www.bereal.tv, you could also watch this show and uh, check out some of the merch, community features, and exclusive content we got on the home site. Represent, support, all the things that you must do um, as one of the doctor's patients. Let's so you go. just bounce back and forth between Twitch and YouTube? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, for certain things, because we, like, this on, on the main YouTube page, we don't mix because, you know, yeah, it strikes and shit like that. But, switch. but you know, on our other channels, we could definitely pop the mix. It's like I do my porn on the other thing. Yeah, we do the only yeah, soft man. porn on the other side. Be real OnlyFans? What's up with <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Exclusive. <laughs> show, your green, show off your green thumbs? Yep. Show up. Want to see my green thumbs? What? Come to my OnlyFans. Oh, <laughs> you said, yeah. Gloves off, bitches. Unpro unprotected thumbs. <laughs> yeah, gloves off, bitches. 
Let's go. <laughs> Garden work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to open up the doors to the insane asylum. That means y'all got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. Let's go. Open the door. Welcome to the insane asylum. All right, let's do this. We got Shane B. He's saying random memory of listening to Digital Underground and as an immature teen, finding out what a Jimmy hat was. My wow. friends and I ran with that. It was very educational, your show. Jimmy hats. Uh, Jimmy hats, sex, sex packets. packets. Yeah. It was popping off. We used to throw them out in the crowd. Yeah, I remember that. Sex packets. I remember. Um, Take one. I remember when y'all were doing that, y'all had um, Pac as the sex packet dealer. Yeah, he used to do it. He was, yeah. the, he was the guy. The sex packets guy. Slanging the packets. Now, Came a long way. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever been with us before a show and put together any of the sex packets with us? No. we used to have to pack the motherfuckers before the show. No, we didn't do that part with you. We <laughs> usually came along at the point where you were loading equipment up or something yeah, like get that. that. Yeah, at yeah. the end, hang out. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got a uh, Rob B. Lab saying, uh, "Don't forget the fashion side of hip hop too. Some of this generations are really stepping it up with their own clothing and merchandise. They have it on point. That is true. True that. They got they got a look. Yeah, there's a look. <laughs> there's a look. You've got the look. Some of it's retro though, man. I've been say, seeing, I've been seeing bell bottoms lately. Some I'm of like, it's retro. Some of it's metro. Yeah. So yeah, if that, you go bring the retro so back, let's we bring retro the, and like, metro. We bringing back the real retro. Okay. See. African medallions and all that. Shock G medallion, med digital underground medallions. We medallion Woo, down. Come on. You know, I'm not against that. Yeah, I'm against guy. bell bottoms, dog. Why, why y'all yeah. bringing bell bottoms back? I seen that shit. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, wait a minute. I, I didn't even like bell bottoms when bell bottoms was out. Duh, man. Yeah, like I, I lived through that. I'm, I'm, I'm old <laughs> yeah. enough to have experience, like wearing them. Damn, yeah, man. You know, to school. Yeah, never. To yeah. school. Never. Yes, I did. And they were polyester <laughs> too. It was like the uh, polyester oh, pants. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, it was fucked up. You went through it. Yeah, I had to. Did had you have to. a turtleneck with those two? I did. Oh, my God. You had to. <laughs> I did. And they had our, stripes going down. Our this, parents uh, were unforgiving in their style way. upon us. You stripes know? went down <laughs> instead of across. Yeah, no. fucked up. I can't see how, how they're bringing that back. I could see the baggy clothes. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I could see the baggy clothes because, you know, we thought that shit was cool. We wore like three Word. times our size sometimes. You and know what I'm saying? It's 30 years ago, so. Yeah. Cyclical. Yeah. Cyclical. Like hey, but do you, Everything do, you, do you have any of your old clothes? And you're like, how the fuck was I wearing that? I did for a time. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and I tried to put it on, and it felt like a goddamn blanket. I yeah, like, oh, like, I used to, <laughs> like imagine I'm I, used to wear, shit. <laughs> I used to wear 2X t-shirts. Uh, I was wearing three. Yeah, yeah and I, I, but I wear a medium now. Yeah. Which is, right, yeah, right. I, I wear more fitted clothing than yeah, I used to. Well, cause, like, right. well the, the clothes that are really your size, basically. It'd be yeah. ridiculous at 50-something to like be... <laughs> Yeah, because we used Where? to wear jerseys. They used to come down here. Three times our size. Like down, they look like look like dresses, and dresses shit. and shit. But there is a charm with a big ass like bubble goose kind of coat or something like that. There's a charm, but only that type True. of rain shit. Yeah. Other than that, it ain't popping like yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, I hear you. I agree. All right, what else you got? We got Sarah saying, hey, guys, just want to say what's up. The OG Cannabis Cafe was such a good vibe with good people. Much love, always. Uh, you got to come down next time we throw that event. You guys where is come it? chill that. Yeah, uh, it's it's over there by, what is it? Uh, it's Hollywood, right? Or, yeah, it's off of La Brea and Lexington. La Brea and Lexington. It's, yeah. it's a nice spot where it's like a cannabis cafe where you could smoke and have dinner. And then and outside you could have drinks and stuff like DJs that. And shit. Nice. Oh, I'm yeah, well, when we when we do the event, yeah, yeah, for sure. fuck it, invite me. But yeah, they do they do a bunch of events there. But yeah, next one, I'll, I'll let you know. Please do. Come sit in with us. I'll come through. Oh yeah. I come with my rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> come with my rhymes on my shit. Yeah, I'm like, waiting yeah. for somebody. I'm, I hey, bro, you, you bro, invite me. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> All right. It open if you like. Listen. <laughs> I got some fire for you, nigga. Hold on, no, no, check me out. Nah, no, nah, no, that ain't it. No, wrong Here we go. <laughs> Wrote this on the way over. Hey, there. look though. What if you rhyme it? Because you know how your phone. And time, then it goes. Right. <laughs> oh my god! You have to have a purposeful fuck up. Like you have to have the routine already, like um, choreographed. Oh, that so no, you got to take right. it off of um, that. Your light goes out. Yeah. Like Ten minutes. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, you know, you could totally fool them by like, you know. Like, not even really using the phone. You're fronting the whole time. You got the whole shit yeah. already locked in and produced. And, like, <laughs> you you make a moment where your phone goes out. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
and you're totally fucking fronting on it, and then like boom, it magically comes okay. back <laughs> or, when it's supposed to. You know what I mean? Right. Or all some showmanship shit. You'd be like, that. You know what? That's all y'all get. Yeah. Like you pimp them with it. Like, that's all y'all get. Ah, oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah. You no, know what I'm saying? Dope, dope. Hey, well, you, you know play. What? You play the fuck up. It's it's not really a fuck up. You're like you know making it seem like you're really on your phone, and you're making it funny because yeah, the fucking phone cut phone. off on yeah. you. Yeah. But I've done that. I've been recording a verse and my fucking light went out. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Uh, you didn't charge your phone and that shit? No, 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 no. The phone didn't die. You know, like, because. No, but like, that happens too. Oh, like, uh, no, I never did that. Yeah, that happened to your me. Your phone my, died? My phone fucking died right in the middle of the shit. I had to go plug that shit in away. <laughs> wow. And then, you know, usually I'll have my. But then you iPad. had to wait to, to charge a little bit to turn that back <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. So you're like, totally. whoa, what are you guys doing? So I think yeah. I was in a, in a session with Burner. Yeah, how was yesterday? Like, I was writing it on my phone and I didn't have my iPad as a backup because, you know, your shit will save it. Oh, and iPad. it died. Oh. And so I'll use my iPad to actually read it so mm. I don't ain't fucking up my eyes on the phone because it's so small, right? Right. So. <laughs> on this night, my fucking iPad wasn't charged. My phone wasn't charged. Boom! I had to wait. Damn. The however long it took to yeah, like get. So he, yeah, he's like, "How's the kids?" Uh, like, so how's the kids, man? What's, right. what, hey, what we what you smoking on? What's right, in that yeah, dog? Yeah. dog? Like, do I gotta that. use the bathroom anyway. Let's do that yeah. one. Let's do that. Let's one. Smoke that one while we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Fuck. <That's>, uh, <laughs> And we got a, let's see, we got Mike saying Money B and Young Hump. Have you guys ever seen any ghost aliens or have any experience with paranormal activities? I have. This this is a question that gets asked all the time because we talk about stuff like this because okay. we've yeah. experienced it. What was your experience? You My experience was, so when I was 11 or 12-ish, right, I had a, I had a, this is a much longer conversation that I'll talk to you about, but I had an uncle. He's like one of my favorite uncles. He got killed. Right, he got stabbed to death in the, in the dice game. Mm. Well, I was in Philadelphia, and I and I didn't even know he had got killed. Right, but I had a dream. He was sitting in my grandmother's chair, wearing all white. He mm. had on a white scarf around his neck. I, it's like clear as day, and he was like, "Everything is gonna be all right." And I didn't know. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that he had been killed. Right. Ooh later you thought you were seeing him i thought i was seeing him but he he came to me wow. and he said that and and then that, you that, found out then then i found out and that was the like the first funeral that i had ever been to wow. and it was like my uncle that's crazy. but it was a trip because then i you know i told some people and you know some people go like yeah and then some people would be like you're tripping you're tripping but that really happened oh that energy is real man yeah. You know what I mean? And and yeah. uh that's that's some crazy shit. How about you, Hump? Man, all right. It's it's not as ill as that story, but it's a little something. Years ago, I was writing to a, a beat that I made. I make beats or whatever. And I, at the time I was fucking with the NPC two thousand and I had a beat playing and it was looping. I'm sitting there writing, the beat's been playing, it's just simple two, four ball loop, whatever it is, you know. It's going for like thirty minutes and I'm writing. And if the snare is like boom, after like 30 minutes, the snare goes, and it was like, like the mach the machine would stop, or it would it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be like a double up on the drum like that. yeah. How would how would an extra drum fill just fill in like fall in like that? Right. You know what I mean? Like it was perfect. And I said, okay, either somebody was in there like. Bruh, I'm here. <laughs> or a spider jumped at the perfect timing <laughs> and landed on the pad. But really, a little spider ain't gonna really fuck those NPC, <laughs> fuck those NPC pads. So it had to be something. Yeah, somebody jumped somebody up was a little like, bit, you know, like because it was <laughs> perfect. It was perfect, and yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah, these energies are real, man. I, real. I believe in that shit. That's why we always say peace. When you feel like you're in the presence of a ghost or an alien or something, just be like, peace. We are friendly. Peace. We're friendly because yeah. they might not understand your, your language, but they're going to understand your energy imprint and your vibration. Yeah. Yeah. If you're like, what the fuck, man? Huh? They're like, problem, zap them. Yeah. But if you're on some peace, baby, it's all yeah. good. One love. They're yeah, like, just be cool with them. So Absolutely. On some, on some hip hop shit, just because I said I, I could expand on what I was telling you about. Yeah. So my uncle that I'm talking about that, that got killed. Mm -hmm. So he used to, he was known in Philly. He was like a smooth player. You know, he was like, like, even in this early seventies, he he was hip hop yeah. of that you know he was of the, that time of yeah. that time. So, but he 
he used to write his name. His name was Dinky, but he used to write King Dink, tag it everywhere mm. that he would go. So it was on the buses throughout the city of Philadelphia. I just found out recently that the graffiti culture that, that we know sort of came out of Philadelphia wow. before New York. Really? So wow. in essence, my uncle was part of that one of the original first wave yeah. of the tag, you know, of, of writing in Philly and tagging because he was all over Philadelphia. Wow. I mean, this is like early 70s. Wow. Mid 70s, 76, 77. Hip hop is the lineage yeah. for you. Yeah, and then and then like I was saying, like I used to go to an art school and before I was before I rapped, you know, I was a tagger. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, I wanted to be a DJ, but I used to write. So that's, that's where it all started. Kind of interesting, right? Yeah. That's Big crazy. up King Dinky. That's right. King Forever. Dink. Yep. Yeah. Big shout to Ask a Bum, GG, and Mad Ways. Thank you guys so much for your super chat. Salute. Oh, yeah. We got an MC Ace Ape saying, Can I get a birthday shout out here in New Zealand? I'm 34 years old. Happy today. birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday man. Kiwi. MC Ace. Party, uh, party, uh, uh, you know. With all your good weed, throw the booth away. And all them uh, homies that are like your so-called Tobies, don't allow them in your party, man. Only your good ones. Hey, man. Happy birthday, yeah. man. And all that wonderful, exotic uh, creatures and animals that are only in New Zealand, <laughs> invite them to the party. <laughs> Boom. Invite them to the party. Yo. Yeah, spiders and all. Yeah, we got to get back out there. That shit was fun. <laughs> they love some hip-hop. They, they do. do. And, it's you know, it's crazy, like you said, because you'll be out there and fucking birds that you've never seen are just landing and walking around like they're pigeons out there. Yeah. But you, we've never seen we've them. We've never seen them. So we're like, what the fuck? Crazy and they're shit. like, oh, that's just that. Yeah. Like, did you eat kangaroo out there? Or you see a buffed-ass kangaroo. Uh, or right. or a gnarly-looking kangaroo. Yeah. Ready to shoot with the, the five with you, right? One yeah. crazy. You ever seen one of those? Yeah. God damn. Crazy. Like, all kangaroos are cute. They're not cute. No, like no, not all. Especially yeah. those super like. Yeah, the buff ones. Buff ones will beat your ass. Yeah, they're you fucking. Punch they'll punch a hole you know. in your stomach, and it's a wrap. Oh yeah, yeah dude. it's a wrap. Good deal. Good. Or kick you. Yeah. Mm. And that, like lay back on that tail. Yeah, and, and just like, bust your you. ass. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I ate kangaroo when I was out there. Look at that. You did. That shit was good. This guy shot the fade. He is like, nah, you <laughs> ate. Bang. <laughs> Because the kangaroo almost strangled his dog, you know? Yeah, I remember that. I saw that whole video. <laughs> but the fact that the kangaroo was like, Ooh, all right, you like, want what? it? He's like, oh, shit. He said, you want I, some. He said I got something for you, <laughs> human. That's oh, a human man. moment right there. Uh, just gonna let me tap your grill real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Uh, all right. Thanks. And then talking about, I think, hip-hop beefs, we got the Pope saying LL versus Cannabis. Bone Thugs versus 3-6, and MC8 versus DJ Quick. For sure. Right, yeah. but, so let me, the Cannabis versus LL, I'm going to have to put an asterisk on that. Yeah. Because that was just like, it was just a studio session where Cannabis kind of made a mistake. Yeah. Right? And then, but because it was, because Cool J had control of that session, he he flipped on him right there in, in that thing. Yeah, that was Genius. Yeah, it was like yeah. wow. You say that. Yeah. That was genius about LL to do that. It's like, yeah. oh. Is that what you're doing? And I'm gonna keep you on here to, to Yeah, make I'm gonna keep you on just so So they can understand what I'm <laughs> what I'm doing to you. It, yeah. <laughs> it's like I need I Robert need Green. You, like, need, how would you feel? <laughs> I need you and people to understand this. Ooh, yeah, LL dude. was cold for that. Ooh. That's like yeah. it's like your big brother. You know, giving you a hard lesson. Yeah, dude. Cause, yeah. You know, he made the remark about, "Is that a mic on your arm? Let me borrow that." Yeah. And then, like, LL responded to him and Oof. said, "In the same song." In the same know? song. That's Ooh. what I'm saying. Like, all like, time. Bro, like, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, cannabis just made a mistake. Yeah, because <laughs> he even, did. I don't think I don't he think, meant to disrespect. Yeah, I don't think he it. did. He just made the wrong comment. But the, yeah, right, because wrong. because he was like, "Your meth, where the guards at? Your red, where the squad at? Your yeah. L, is that a mic on your arm? Let me borrow that." Yeah. He didn't yeah. just say it out of context. Yeah, no. It was like beautiful verbiage. <laughs> yeah, it's but. It just got taken out of context. And you said it. <laughs> L, that's like a big brother teaching you a hard lesson. Yeah, like, oh, don't do that. Oh, you want don't this? Uh, oh, oh you, want you want this, mic? Mike? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> Showed you real quick. I mean, both of them had ice cold bars, but you know, hey. Yeah. But it was LL. Know that the LL the put that, you know, big brother. Greatest of all yeah. time. Yeah. And then was, since we go in there, when, when after second round knockout, he came back with the joint, and the first line was, "Don't ever, 
Don't ever open your mouth and mention my seed. Talking about my book you bought to read. I love that. I'm, like, I'm hard body, L. That's hard body. Hey, I'm, 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 I mean, right, if you're right. going up against L, you got to know oh, yeah, man. that you are going up against hey, listen. a beast. One of my favorite hip-hop moments I always tell people is, like, you know, think about it, around 90... Two ish, right? Mm -hmm. You know, LL, his prime was 87, 88, you know what I mean? So by then, people were like, oh, L ain't da 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 da. Shh, they slept on him. Bro, I was Brax. in a club in New York and I see this nigga in this nigga ear like screaming. And I look and it's L, he just snapping. Snapping, like top, like just in a club, just in well, somebody's ear. You know, people don't know that it is, what it wow. was was that he got strategic, right? He like someone, you know, like got in his ear and said, "Hey, look, you're only gonna sell so many albums to these street cats. You're gonna have to like figure out right where your your real demographic is." And realistically, it was to the ladies. Well, it always so, was. So, so it, it, it it always was. So like instead of making a bunch of street records, which he'd already done and capped everybody with it, right? He's right. like, "Okay, I'm gonna make songs for the ladies," right? And he won every fucking summer. He was going platinum based off of that strategy. That's why Drake, guys like Drake exist now because of what LL Cool oh, yeah, J did. Oh, for the, sure. He got that formula. Like yeah. I could make street songs, but they're only gonna go so far. If I make songs for the ladies, but that are still dope, and then it's I gonna go further for me. And that's and that that's LL formulated that shit before oh, anybody. Yeah. But people forgot. That my dude is a wizard of words. Talk he's gonna about fucking it. man put you. Talk yeah. about it. He's gonna splash you with those bars, and and uh, he's doing it now these days. It's like on some of the new songs, he's showing that he still got that lyrical prowess. That oh, everybody yeah. like was LL like, oh, is LL. Shit. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, some people LL Karis one. Yeah, you know, it's like they always gonna on. have it. Always even gonna have even it. Kane. I heard him bust other other day. Always oh, gonna yeah, have he was, it. Always he was gonna snapping. have it. Still the best. I yeah. was gonna say my brother Love Thurston How the Third told me that at one point LL hit, hit him and was was trying to get him a record deal, and he said he called him out the blue at like three in the morning, and was busting rhymes on the phone with him for like two hours. Like, wow, who's doing that of young? Like, like who's doing that? Like, you got to really right. be about your shit to really want to do that and have the rhymes and the endurance at three in the morning, calling them up for the first time you spoke to them on the phone. Like, let's rhyme an hour, two, maybe three hours. I could be wrong, could be, but at least two hours. Like, that's 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 real MC wow. shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, me and this man have done that shit on the phone, like yeah, going we, over rhymes and shit. We just go through I know it. you have with somebody. Yeah, for you know, sure. Come on. It 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 just do, it happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Like okay, passion. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, right. like you never lose it. Like that's the whole thing. It's kind of weird with hip hop. Is like where people want to force you to to make a decision and like have to stop doing yeah. it. Yeah, like, it's it's. It it, we were talking about it last week. Um, is that it's the only art form in music that's ageist. Like when you're when you hit your mid thirties, they all they want to roll you out because in, in realistically, it's not because the music ain't good. It's just because the 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 record companies that you know have their traditional ways of putting out records don't know how to um market. to to market to people that grew up with you and are maybe now in your age demographic that would buy these records, but they don't know when your shit is coming out anymore because the yeah. realities of life happen, right? So. Um, they got to pay And yeah, they can't bills. control you like that. They, they yeah. have a life. You're an adult. And and record companies don't want to spend the money on and or for the research on how we find these people that will buy the records at this point in life. But yeah, here's, can I add that I think that it's over the years, like it has matured a little bit, right? Slightly. Because, because like you said, so when I was coming up, right, there were no 30 five-year-old rappers because no. it wasn't, it hadn't yeah. been around long well, enough. It hadn't existed. Right. It hadn't existed, right? So I remember, you know, LL Cool J came out when he was 16, Roxanne when she was 14, Special Ed, 16. So, and yeah. and even, think about it, like, Kane and them, they was, like, younger. So by the time Digital Underground came out, I was 19. In my mind, I thought I was over the hill. 
What? Yeah, I was like, damn, let's took Because you think you got to start young? I thought you had, to, like, if you didn't start LL 16, cool, 17. LL Cool J was like a LeBron and Kobe, like, coming out of high school into right. the pros. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, you know, just if it took that long, if you were, like, if in my mind I'm thinking, if I had to go into my 20s and that's when it started, then I was past it, right? right? Oh, so man. then you you fast forward. Now we get older, and then you have... In the the mid nineties, um, Jay Z and them they were in their late twenties. Yeah, they were in their late twenties. They were in their late twenties, right? Even though when we were coming up, Chuck was older, right? Yeah. He was in his late twenties and Ice T. You know what I mean? Yeah, him and Ice T. Right, yeah. but then now, you then you go past that, and then you go into the mid two thousands, and Two Chains is is pushing his forties. Yeah, pushing you know what his forties, I mean? yeah. So now you have Killer Mike. Who just won Grammys and he's forty eight. So what I'm saying is, it's it's slowly but surely. Yeah, it is slowly but because surely. it's yes. because now we've seen it. Yes, you know what I mean. If you don't, if you radio remember, doesn't yeah. support it so much, no, but they don't. People do, but people right. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it wasn't accepted is because we hadn't seen it. Yeah. And the older that hip hop gets, we're seeing it. Yeah, it gets older, but it's it's what you said. Labels don't know how to market. They don't. So they won't support it. No. But the people accept it a little more. And they know how to get to it without the label. Yeah, that's the good it, thing. It's right. digestible now. Yeah. And that's why you know, like, I'm comfortable with still releasing music. Yeah. Why and not? And still hearing and, and if it's you, still in, you got to do and, it. And everybody. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's Word a good up. point. The prestige and the legacy now with like the Grammys, shit like that, given Killer Mike or Nas's album just being inducted, uh, entered into the Library of Congress. Oh, yeah. The yeah, prestige sure. and all that stuff is there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm just remembering, like, I remember in the in the early 90s, like the Rolling Stones, they had their big tour and fucking Keith Richards is like 90, barely could hold the, the shit. And it's selling out stadium. Oh, Yeah. yeah. People want to see that. People I don't give want a fuck to see how it. old they get. They don't care as long as you still knock it down. You still can do it. Yes, I, actually, it's even celebrated. Yeah. More so that you've been around. Like, like we should yeah. be celebrated that exactly yeah. that we've been around. Well, that's moment. what it should be. It's it should we're be. still trying to make our way up there, but it, it, it it's what it should be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it starts with us, right? So that's right. I I celebrate it. We'll start celebrating each other and watch it happen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. We Smoke got, some. We got Big bitch. 40 saying, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke some, bitch. Who said that? Smoke. Fuck, who said Pimp C. That? Pimp C. That's yeah. That. yeah. Smoke some, bitch. Yeah. That was his line. I love we it. got a uh, Big 40 saying, yo, Quick was responding to eight Death Wish 3. Eight hit him with the, and you don't want to see me, DJ Quick in a khaki bikini, saying one of the <laughs> coldest lines ever. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. That's right. I know, I know, I knew the eight started it, but I didn't know he said that. Yeah. You don't want to see me? No, he had a cold song bikini? too. He had a oh, cold yeah. song too. It's just, but what you said, you know, um, well, Quick, Quick's genius was that he made it a club song, so right. it got out further yeah so and, and, and beat it, here's the other thing that I, I even tell people like when you make a record like that or if you're gonna go with somebody don't make a record so like eight's music is just eight's music but i always say like when eight was dissing like even his responses it sounded like he was in a room loading up a gun a yeah pet. right yeah. like ah, oh, like right like sad right when quick doing oh, these like ah, oh. i'm getting ready to go to the club yeah, he's like fuck you and and that was, on, that was on the uh murder was the case soundtrack Yep. So it had a unique placement. It was on that album. It yeah. wasn't just his album. That and was a big ass album. A big ass album. And that line. Was it on that one or was it above the room? It was on Murder Was the Case. I think it was, it was Murder Was the Case. Okay. Yeah, and that album and that vert that line, the infamous line sure. was like I'm not exactly. I think it's sure. on the same record as you better recognize Research. Seed, right? Let's see. You might be right, but I, I thought it was above the rim. Yeah. What well, album was uh, Dollars and While Trees? they researched that, I want to sure, say, and right. that and that line, no, you good. That that line is like in the fourth verse. <laughs> so shit, like yeah. it's like the fourth verse. It's a fast song, so it don't feel like that. But it's like the fourth verse. Yeah, he held them on days, to it. Them he, days, he held, fourth yeah, verse. He, just, he held like, on to me, that. Ooh, right, right, right. <laughs> there you go. He but, said, "I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna draw him in, and then bang, the smack." <laughs> one, one of my one of my favorite disc records, I don't, and I'm not even sure many people up on this was. Um, Jack the Ripper. Oh, yeah, that was hard. Oh, cool, Jay. But yeah. he said, check out the way I say my display. I play my J on the back behind the cool without the AY. Woo! 
He said, how you like yeah. me now? I'm getting busier. busier. I'm yeah. double the platinum. platinum. I'm watching, watching you get dizzy. Yeah. Yeah. Check yeah. out that. Hey, but yeah, you know what? He was killing it. Another song that people don't even mention really in, in, in the disc record conversation, which arguably is the one of all time, hmm. Fuck With Dre Day. That's a diss record. Really the is. whole that song is a, yeah, is a is. diss record. Oh, Every yeah, he gave Mr. It to, Buster, gave it to, gave it where to, the fuck you at? The yeah. first line, first the whole line. song. It's aggressive off top. Well, he oh, gave it to Luke and a Luke, and, Easy, and Tim Dog, Ice Cube, right? Tim yeah. Dog, yeah, I think not so. Cube. I think so. I think he, no. said, he, he said he said something, something about his white hat. socks. Yeah, his white yeah. socks. Hat. But but in the video, in the video, it was it was um. Uh, no, but uh, that song, he was different. No, he, he said White yeah, Sox had it. But in the video, they yeah. had the dude that looked like uh, Luke wearing the, the, wearing the chick. I'm saying he, he dissed Luke. Too. I he think in Luke. the visual, it's different, it's but a, on but the, the record. Song, yeah, yeah, he's dissing Cube. Yeah, yeah. He's dissing. Because Luke ain't never wore a White Sox Yeah, hat. he dissing Luke, Q, I mean, he dissing Luke, Easy, and, and Q yeah. in wow. that record. Hey, Bolton, how many more you got up there? Uh, we got a few. All right, uh, go run ahead. through it. Sorry. Uh, we got Wilfred Cyrus saying, yo, I am running for local office. I think he's up in Michigan. He's nice. saying, I was nominated by my party to run for the county board of commissioners for my south district. Congratulations. Get it, Congrats. Get it Good man. luck. And we got a uh, Rome up in here. Thank you so much for the super chat. And we get this question all the time by this guy named Midget Mike. He's asking... Uh, He's asking uh, you guys, um, name a rapper who gets no airtime in your car. Specifically. Wow. That gets none in my car? Yeah, like that you like if you heard a certain person's shit, you're like, oh hell no. Boom. <laughs> Fast forward. Go ahead, I'll, let you, <clears throat> I'll let you go with that one. I ain't trying to do it. It's, oh, it's, man. A, it's a hard question. He asks everybody. It, it, this. it ain't a hard question, but I don't know if I want to really go there right now. Right. Why not? <laughs> no, 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 he Why not? I would, I would say though. it if I had a guy, right? I'm trying to think of a guy. Like to really give you a guy, you don't have. Go ahead and say yours. Nah, I mean like. He's like nah, I'm cool. <laughs> I, I'm like, I mean maybe like. Uh, you know what? Uh, okay, I'm gonna throw one out there just to keep it a buck. I really wasn't fucking with the comment that Post Malone made where he said he don't listen to rap for deep lyrics, or all that. So I'm gonna throw him up in there, man. Right. You know, okay, fuck it, man. Okay. Fuck. All right, okay. that's fair enough. Because he did. I ain't had no issue with it until he said that. I'm like, well, you know, some of this shit he's right <laughs> with some of this shit. Fair enough. He said rappers, right? Yeah. Oh, rapper. Okay, come. I'll come back. All right. Let's keep it moving. All right, keep it moving. Uh, we got Jane Jog asking, what is Money B's best Shock G story? Mm. All right, I'll give you one that'll go back to what we were talking earlier when we were talking about organically how things came into our show. So we were in Europe. Um, this is 89 before Humpty Dance came out, whatever. And... We were, there was a, a promoter who shot light, right? So he, he wanted to fuck with her, but, you know, he hadn't spoken to her yet. So we're backstage at the show, and they had, like, these mannequins. So with us, he was like, man, if whatever her name is, if I had her, and he grabbed the mannequin, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> and he's twisting the mannequin up, and he's all, like, he's on the ground. He's super grinding it, and the chick walks in, and she's be, she's be. So we're on wow. that side, and wow. he's doing it. He's that. right behind him, but he don't know. And he's like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, this bitch. And I wrap her up, and I do this, and yeah, and I just take her and I smack that shit. And he grabbed the bitch's head, and he's doing all this, and the bitch, she's just standing right behind him, right? Wow. That's amazing. And, we, and she's a promoter too. She's one, yeah, she's one of our record promoters. Oh, so he's shit. like, look, but you can't say nothing because she's already there. Yeah. Right? So wow. He's like, and then he looked. <laughs> so, but when I tell you, that's what that's what spawned us using the blow up dials in our stage show. <laughs> wow, that's what, that's what we took. That's where it came from. That's where it came from. Oh my god, because it was that's so right. funny. Wow. We were on the floor dying for like a half an hour. Wow, laughing. he had a want to get away moment. Want to yeah, get yeah. away. And, so, and then because it was that. We was like, we gotta put somehow put this in the show, that's and that's awesome. where that came from. That's awesome, that's fucking amazing. amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. But could you imagine that? Yeah. Oh, bro, I was like, <laughs> was Lord <fucking> mercy. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> to be a fly on the wall. Oh man. All right. <laughs> Big show to pause. Thank you so much for the super chat, and we got loved him kill is saying, uh, my first music purchase was the Humpty Dance cassette single, and I still have it. That odd couple song you talked about with Shock and Biz Marquee is one of my favorite digital underground the tracks. Couple. They yeah. clown each other. Word. Respect. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was called The Odd Couple. It was on Who Got the Gravy album. I believe it came out in 96 or 90s. We rocking with Biz forever in the day. Ever. Forever in the day. Yep, yep. 
Happy birthday. We Legend. got something coming. Yeah. Shout out to Cool V. Yeah. The homie. Happy birthday, Biz Marquis. We got J Max C saying Digital Underground is legendary, man. Same team. True that. Is it his birthday today? I believe so. Yeah, Biz Marquis. What a blessed birthday. day. So today is a day of an yeah. eclipse, which happens to be on Biz Marquis' birthday. Yeah. Yes, right after all of this Biz Marquis love we've been receiving with the documentaries. And all. That's beautiful, man. Yo, yeah. I'm going to make a world premiere here. I got a video coming soon for a song. I covered a Biz Marquis song. Nice. I'm going to just say that and I'm going to leave it alone until I'm ready to show more. That's right. There you go. Biz Marquis. Biz Marquis. Biz Marquis. Shout birthday. out to Pete Nice. We went to the Universal, the, 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 the pop up museum they had on here, and, and Pete Nice put Biz Marquis' chain around my neck. I felt like oh, I was knighted. Oh, that's Incredible. crazy. Awesome. Incredible. That's, that's my guy right there, Pete. I love you, man. Dude, that's rad. And uh, Money B, everyone in the chat is wondering what was it like working with Pac, and could you tell us just a couple of stories of your time with him? Um, Pac, he was. Probably the most driven um, person that I've ever met, right? His his work ethic was incredible. And really, that's like the in totality, that's what I take from my relationship with him. Because when it started out, I was big bro because I had been in it for a year or two. And I'm only like a year and a half older than him, but I had been in it. So when we brought him in, you know, I was always like, don't do that. This is how you do this. Da, 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 da. Giving him guidance. Giving him guidance, whether you took it or not. Oh, you yeah. know, we and he was a wild guy, right? So, you know, and, and I don't really like to focus too much on that, but if people want to know, yes, he was that wild before. People think he was. People think he got this and turned it. No, he was he was No, really, it just amplified his wildness he that he was, already had. I actually tell people by the time you got to know who he was, he had calmed down a little. Yeah. Cause before he was just Wild, wild, yeah. right? But what I take from the relationship and just from the time around him is just the work ethic was unlike anything. And so it's it's an amazing thing when you start out as big bro, but in the end, he's big bro. Yeah. Because he taught me way more than I was able to teach him. Right. You know, just the, the lessons that I go back and then, uh, yeah. then I realized, like, for instance, you know, we were roommates on tour, Right. And he was just sloppy, right? He just <laughs> didn't give a fuck. He'd come in, wherever he rolled his blunts, the, the, at, wherever it All fell, the guts everywhere, He'd yeah. just leave it, his clothes, Gross. whatever. And I always chalked it up to, like, well, he never had anything, so he just didn't even know how to right. respect it, right? Because right. he was always moving from pillar to post. He never really had a home like that, you know, growing up. But then he, you know, when then when he finally got his first apartment, he treated it the same way. Same so way, yeah. <laughs> you don't know till you got it. Yeah, you know. But, but but you know, in hindsight, when I look at it now, I I I in my mind I explain it this way: It's like some people don't have time for those too too much. He had too, yeah. too much other important shit to do than to worry about where his shoes was lined up neatly yeah, in a right. corner yeah. because he was just... He had bigger vision. Yeah, bigger that. vision. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a, a part of it. And now mm -hmm. I understand that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like... He's a complex dude. A lot sure. of life lessons that I took just from knowing him. Not all, not all, you know, humans, no human is perfect, right? Right. Yeah. Not everything is positive. We're all flawed, for sure. Everybody's yeah. flawed, Everyone. right? But, you know, you, you look back and you, you draw from... The experiences, right? Yes. But, bro, he was, he was a, like I said, how I seen you get it. Yeah. I seen him get it. Oh, he's a real one, man. I seen him get it. Oh yeah. And he deserved it. Yeah, you know for what I mean? sure. Because he he worked for it for sure. He was willing to do whatever it took. That's to right. Make it happen. Next that seems to be it. Oh, All good. All right. Ah. Hey, we want to thank everybody for uh, getting down with us in the chat room. Mm -hmm. Um. With super chats and uh, the submissions keep them coming to be real TV contest at gmail.com. And I want to thank Young Hump and my bro Money B for coming yeah. in, sitting yeah. in with us. Yep. Um, man, thank you guys for having us. Oh, man, it's yeah. about time to get you back up in here, man. Shit. Oh, man, we got. Bring me in. Uh, yeah. Put me in, coach. <laughs> got to get you back up. <laughs> All right. Can I uh, shout out? I want to shout out. Um, yes, indeed. Oak Park Brewery. You know, in Sacramento, you know, we, I've been sitting there sipping on these two iconic. We got the Fugitive Brew and the Best of the West Brew. Of course, I know you don't drink, but we got the the 50th year hip hop. We will have it. You. Trust. Keep it and, and 
show it off to the people. Oh, yeah, we're going to have it right here on the table. That thing and do that. But, yeah, we got the Shock G, Golden L, re-release. Um, the event is in Sacramento at Oak Park Brewery, April 27th. Um, if you're in the area, get with us or, you know, follow me at MoneyB69. Get the information. You can pre-sell. If you're in California, we can actually ship you your case or four pack or whatever. But um, Shock G Golden L. I thought I had bro bring the bring the can, but yeah, we're doing the re-release of the the beer inspired by Shock G, our brother. And oh, yeah. that's what it's all about. And of course, catch the digital underground on the road. You know, we about to hit it real heavy. Nice. This, right. this uh Hell yeah. spring and summer. And we bust some stages. Oh, man, all we the gotta way jump down. on some stages again. Yeah, we I don't know for how real we though. It, but I was gonna say it. I it was waiting be, to say it. It would be amazing. We got to do something for sure. To, yeah. to, to do oh, that. Hell yeah. Can I, um, real quick, just one more funny story. There was one time when um, fucking Insane Clown Posse wanted to take us out on the road. And they brought us out on a show. And for one, you know, Shock just wasn't aware when they throwing the shit at you. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it means so like you. Yeah, he yes. wasn't. <laughs> he was not tripping off Yeah, he was like, what the what the fuck? Yeah, he was, like, nah, he was taking it a little personal, right? Yeah. But but at the same time, it was right around the time. What's the what's the main guy? He had stopped. Violet J. J. He had stopped getting high, right? Yeah. So he was not fucking with the drinks or nothing. Mm -hmm. And we was hella <laughs> drunk. And yeah, high. yeah. And it's just like, yeah. He's like, I don't know. It's a crazy ass combination. Yeah, he's like, I don't know. Yeah. So that never happened. It's you know, it's a fun show. You just got to know that when they're throwing shit up at you, that they, they actually show in their love. I knew yeah. that. I, I knew that. Didn't she didn't that. know that. And he was just like. Yeah, it's a hard one you, yeah. to wrap your yeah. head around. Like the, like the you got to have your head on the swivel. Like That's the Blues sure. Brothers when they rolling, rolling, yeah. rolling. Psh, yep. Rolling, rolling, raw high. That whole deal. Yeah, yeah. You got to have got, your head on the swivel. That's right. You got any shout outs you want to give, Young Hump? Man, bro, man. First of all, shout out to you. Shout outs to Be Real TV, whole team, Soul Assassins, the West Coast, all my OGs that I'm just honored to be in this position to rock with. My man C minus, the whole fucking family. Yo, everybody, my peoples. I'm just happy, man. I got a lot of love and it's an honor to be here to sit down. I ain't never really met you before, you know what I mean? So it's like, put that on my bucket list, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here, man. And um, shouts to everybody that's, that's doing the Humpty Hump. That's what's up. Let's go. How about you, C minus? Come on. Uh, shout out to everybody here. Yeah, C minus, you're uh, welcome. Yeah. Not <laughs> just... <laughs> shout out to everyone here at the table. Shout out to the Trias Crew, Dom, uh, Ray, and Bolton. Shout out to Pedro. Shout out to E Zone. Shout out to the strong one. Uh, shout out to Javi Lopez. Shout out to Psycho Less. Shout out to yeah. DJ Silos. Shout out to everybody that watches. You can follow me at C minus fan four on all social medias. And OG DJ Silos? Uh yep. Yeah. No way. Yeah, he's here. What the fuck? Oh yeah, he's yeah, there. he's here. And yeah. then uh shout out to everybody uh that tuned in yesterday for the nothing and were <laughs> set and shout out to the word dudes and the nothing dudes. What up? So Oh, real quick, I ain't saying my my young hump DU on Instagram and all that, and the DU's for digital underground, but I spell it correctly, young hump DU. You can holler at me, give me the come host a party DJ or maybe talk to some girls. Ooh, do there. my thing. Hey, that money be 69. How fast Yeah, throw that. that. Yeah, exactly. We out here. We all hey, here. wait. That's yeah. my high school picture. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Look at my guy, guy. <laughs> Yeah, my guy, baby. letting you know. <laughs> yo, and hit Mun, yo, he got, we got incredible digital underground merch, DU merch. Yo, oh, yeah, incredible merch. Oh, yeah, underground merch, nice. Get incredible. Word up. out here rocking and rolling, man. Yeah. When I grow up, I want to be like, be real. Man, we try. <laughs> Yo, this nice. whole, I'll, I'll try. Yo, it's yeah, so, I'll try, but yeah, one of us are going to grow up. Some one of these days. Yo, Eventually. it's so tight. The organization and the way y'all have it, all the different things going on in these rooms, it's incredible. Bro. Thank you, sir. Balls. Incredible, yes. Thank you, yeah. sir. No diddy. Yeah, absolutely. All right, how about you, Bolton? Yo, shout the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shout to everybody who put hashtag Be Real TV in the super chat for Yay. the giveaway on Friday. And uh, shout to Ray Morning Shot Films and shout to the Dominator. What's up, B? Yeah. Practice love always and check out the mix after this. Swallow that. Yes. Yeah.